Tom's here today on BKR Sport. We are back here for another NRL tier maker for the Rugby League positions. I am so keen for this one. It's an exciting one. We're here for the wingers. If you don't know what the series is, basically, myself and another content creator in the NRL community will be going through each and every single one of the players in each position and giving them a ranking from elite quality to the job, not that great and unproven. Obviously, you know, it is all down to our opinion. You guys probably will, absolutely will, have a different opinion to us. So, obviously, go in the comment section and let us know what you're thinking. This is also filmed in 2022, in January, not in 2023. So I know you're out there, so there's every single time I'm gonna say it again. If you're coming here in 2023, you're saying, how do you put this player here? You had a great year. It's like, man, come on, man. We're doing it in 2022, relax, it's all good. Next year, actually in a couple of weeks for you, we'll be doing it again to get around it. But obviously I'm not here by myself. We do have it, Kalaki, so rugby league on. How are you doing, champion? Okay, boys, thanks for having me again, man. I think we did one last year. Maybe we did centers, I can't remember now, but it was, it was fun and um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I think we did hookers, maybe. Hookers sounds uh, familiar too. Might have been. I'm not too sure. Uh, we might have done a couple actually. I think last year yeah. I did a couple with some. Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, I love this series, man. I love the fact that we're able to, especially with it being so short now until the rugby league season, you just start to get really pumped up, even without any games going on. I think it's just a really good way to kind of remember what we've got going on very, very soon. Yeah, most definitely, man. And then, you know, whenever you're ranking players, there's room for that debate. There's room for that friendly banter. There's room for uh, the debate as to why you might rate a certain player higher. And I think that's what also makes wings so interesting because, you know, you have great finishers. You have players that are great coming out of their own end. You have players that are great under the high ball. There's so many different attributes that can make a great winger. And that just adds to the debate, I feel. I think that with wingers as well, like you can clearly see some exceptional wingers, but you can also clearly see some that aren't exactly fantastic. And I want to throw this out there for any player who watches this, because I know some of them do and watch last seasons and weren't exactly impressed that they were not that great. We're not necessarily saying that you're a bad player, and I say this every time too, we are saying that compared to the other players right now, you're just not probably at the same level uh, comparatively. And you can absolutely prove us wrong and have a great year. Probably have a couple times last year. Uh, the potential is absolutely there. You are a professional NRL player. We know that you are quality regardless. But with that being said, you know, we do have to compare with everybody here. And yeah, look, some people ain't going to that not that great section. It is what it is. It just gives you guys and fuels you to get better, to get around it. But uh, also, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so obviously we're going to go through each and every single one of these plays. Uh, there is a couple of plays that you'll get a couple of teams that have more than two wingers here. And the only reason for that is because there's no guaranteed winger at the club. So I guess that probably will tell you what those wingers will be ranked. But in the same sense, there's no guaranteed winger. So we're chucking in kind of everyone around there. But are you ready to go here? Yeah, looking forward Actually, to the trip in. Before we go, obviously I've got to, uh, got to say uh, to you, obviously let everyone know where you're from. Obviously people should know where Clarkie's Rubber League home is, but uh, what do you do and kind of what, do you do, what, what are you doing in the community? Yeah, good day, guys. I'm Clarky. Um, I just do a digital column online where I upload content, articles, um, all sorts of rugby league content. It's um, Clarky's Rugby League column. It's across all of social media. Um, and if you, you know, if you're here and you watch Blaze predominantly for some other sports, I've also got a sports column on Instagram where I do a wider variety. Also, so yeah, that's me and I should, just, I should just probably call you Clark and say Clarky's Rugby League column. I guess people who've known you for so long, I just I'm so used to saying. Uh, rugby league with uh, with your page, but yeah, he does do obviously yeah. multiple sports now. I see the UFC getting done. You know, I've seen a couple of NBA posts here, cricket posts here. He's playing smack and he's coming for me. He's coming for my head here <laughs> over at BKR. But uh, let's get into it here. And the first guy that we do have on the cards is Mr. Alex Johnston. Very good player. What are your thoughts on AJ from the Rabbits? Well, my thoughts on Alex Johnson, I'd say he'd have to be up there for elite um, in terms of try scoring ability. And if there's really one attribute you want from a winger, it's scoring tries, right? That's sort of um, their main function in a team, I would suggest. Um, he's a man that is probably on track to actually break the NRA record for the most tries of all time. Yeah, well. um, he was up there last year. If he didn't have the most tries last year, he was definitely with, up within the top five. Um, but that wasn't a one-off year for AJ. That wasn't a year where we go, oh, you know, he played so fantastic this year. He's been known for that for a number of years as a fantastic finisher. Um, I think having him anywhere lower than elite would, would be um, incorrect. He, he's got to be in the elite category for me. Well, every single year, man, he's competing for the uh, the most tries in the season. And effectively, yeah. as he said, the winning position is to score the tries. Now, obviously, I will throw out a debate on that relatively. I've got him in elite, but I would throw a debate onto the wording of that because obviously we do have Charlie Staines, who we'll get to in a moment, that 
obviously is an elite, but can still score a lot of tries uh, because obviously the system around him and the situation around him, uh, yes, you still need to be able to put the ball down over the line, and that's great. But in the same sense, not necessarily will they always be elite just because they score a heap of tries. Um, but Alex Johnson is a fantastic player. You know, he's got that big body. You know, he's not exactly the fastest player ever, but he still has a bit of pace about him. And, um, yeah, I think he's always been great at the Rabbitohs and it'll uh, be good to see how they go this year. I think this year might actually be the difference between him maybe staying in elite and going down to quality, depending on how they go, so because there's no way better now. And Adam Reynolds, with his great kicking game, is also gone. So he might lose out in that factor. But in the same sense, he's definitely right now in elite. And I think this is the first time ever that we've had straight away someone go into the top category. Uh, so there we go. Alrighty, next up here, we do have Bally Simonson. Is it Simonson or Simonson? Uh, and he's actually gone from the Raiders to the Eels. He has gone to the other. I believe it's Bailey Simonson. Um, he signed with the Eels this year, which is interesting. I think if he was to remain at the Raiders, we, we probably wouldn't have seen him um, in the NRL this year. I think he'd probably go with Kotrick and Rapana as your wings there. So um, he, he moves over to the Eels where he will have an opportunity. Ferguson is, um, he won't be there this year. So that opens up his spot. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's probably between Simonson and Hayes Dunster. Now, so far in Bailey's career, I've been impressed in stages. Um, and sometimes I've probably thought he might have um, oh, maybe not fit into not that great, but he hasn't always sort of been higher than that per se. I'm probably looking to put him in the do the job. Um, I think there could be an argument to maybe bump him into one lower, uh, but I probably wouldn't put him in quality. He's still young in his career. He's still got plenty of time to progress up the ranks, but For now, I've probably got him in the lower sort of echelon of do the job. Yeah, look, I think I'm going to make an argument here for not that great. And it's not because I think that he's a terrible player. I just think that uh, necessarily the situation hasn't really suited him so far. And I am really keen to see how he does go at Parramatta. I think the players we've been putting in the do the job section probably just have that little bit more. I think there'll be more of a, and I said this a lot in these throughout the series, that there's probably more of a gap between him and the other guys are going to do the job and him and the other guys who are not that great right now. So, look, guys, I'm, I'm happy if you really want to put him and do the job, but I would probably put him in. I think he'll be at the top end and not that great because he has potential and he's also going to a new team where things can change. And I guess the Eels setup is maybe a little bit better than the Raiders, but in the same sense, I'm not too sure. I'd, call, I'd put him at the top end and not that great. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And I think how he performs this year will really dictate whether we're right or wrong in that because there's every chance that Hayes Dunster gets that wing spot and he misses out Mm -hmm. as well. Um, So I I would agree with that. I think that's probably a fair place for Simonson um, to where his career currently is. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let's move into Brian To'o here from the Panther Panthers. And for me, man, I would probably be throwing him above Alex Johnson in elite. I love what he has brought to the game. I actually think that as a winger, he has adjusted the game so uh, crazily in the wing position, you know, similar to, I get, I'm not going to compare him necessarily to Steph Curry, but the way that Steph Curry changed the game in regards to his position and also just in general the game, I actually do attribute a lot of that, what he did with the Warriors, to uh, what To'o is currently doing with the Panthers and his body size and his pace and his strength and just the way he moves, man. I love what Brian To'o brings to the game. Obviously, Premiership winner now as well, and I'll put him above Alex Johnson in the league. Oh, here's one as well. And I, before I say, I will absolutely agree with you. For me, Brian Toto is the number one wing in the game right now. Now, he's only 23 years old, Blaze. 15 tries last year. Here's where it gets really impressive. That's ridiculous. 129 tackle breaks and an average of 245 metres. Yeah. Um, he ran over 5,000 metres last year um, and he only played 21 games, so not even the full season. Now, in the past, there would only been at one stage there three players who'd ever made that milestone. It was RTS, Sam Burgess... And I believe uh, it was Daniel Vito, someone you wouldn't expect. Since then, I believe a few other players have overtaken that milestone. But I wouldn't hesitate to say that I believe Brian Toto, with 21 games, has the least games in NRL history to hit over 5,000 metres in a season. That's how impressive he was. For me, he's the number one wing in the game. And the, and the reason why he's the number one wing in the game is everyone knows what Brian Toto is going to do. Mm. Everyone knows when the Panthers are coming off their own, out of their own half Brian Toto is going to scoot from dummy half or he's going to have an early hit up. Mm. But he's so powerful and dynamic in the way that he plays that it doesn't matter. You can't stop him. In the same sense of, as you alluded to with Steph Curry there, you know he's going to shoot the three, but historically teams haven't been able to stop that. Until and there's, there's a wide <laughs> ver- Until recently, yes. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, wide, uh, you know, um, there's, there's a wide variety of athletes across different sports where you know what they're going to do, but you can't stop them. And that's what makes an athlete great. And that's why I've got Brian Tite as my number one wing in the game. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think anyone can argue with it. And uh, the thing is, is that a lot of people might say, okay, well, is it the Panthers? He's got Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai, Apisai Kotsal, you know, one of the greatest spines in the game right now. And it's like, okay, cool. But I believe he would do this literally anywhere. I think that even if you probably come into the Cowboys, which is a struggle team, or into the Knights this year, who will more than likely be a struggle team, I still think that he's going to be in the elite category. So I think he yeah. does translate through the teams regardless of the quality. Obviously, he won't be as quality as he gets at the Panthers. But in the same sense, yep. he is just such a surreal player and I'm looking forward to him again at the end. It's just mm. crazy how young that team is, dude. I guess it's ridiculous Please. how young that whole team is. Not even just him. 100%. Here's another quick one to add to that argument also. In the sense of how great Alex Johnston is, he's a player that needs to be facilitated. And so playing outside of Latrell Mitchell, Dan Gagai and Cody Walker... There's not a more dangerous edge in rugby league. And there's an argument if you take Alex Johnson off that edge, potentially he wouldn't be as successful. Just like we saw Robert Jennings on that edge. He had a fantastic season, second most tries in the league, went to the Tigers, didn't really play that well of football. But in the sense of what Brian Toto does so well, it doesn't matter who he's playing for because he doesn't require anyone to facilitate his skill set, to activate it. He gets the ball in his hands and he goes 100 miles an hour and he makes it happen. And so I think that really uh, furthers and strengthens the debate you were making there. Well, that's the thing. And that's going to translate a little bit into, we'll transition a little bit into the next one here, who is Charlie Staines of the Penrith Panthers. Now, I want to really focus here and say that although we just argue for the fact that obviously, you know, the Panthers do have that really good system and and whether, and you can take Brian To'o out of that Panthers system. I personally, for me, don't believe Charlie Staines would be as good if he was to, to go elsewhere. Now, a lot of people, you know, say this, uh, this is probably the biggest argument for him. With that being said, you can only play for who you're playing for. And I think we do still have to go off, I guess, what we see from what we see because he's not at another team. So there's no point. But in the same sense, it does keep going into the back of my mind. I'm not the biggest fan of Charlie Staines, uh, Charlie Staines regardless, even the Panthers, even though he can score some tries. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I would probably put him down a little bit further. But in the same sense, he probably... Actually, no, you know what? I wouldn't even do the job because he does score tries still. Okay. I, I can agree with that, but I'm also going to disagree. And I'm going to throw forward the importance of your wing these days, uh, breaking tackles early in the set, getting post-contact meters and getting your team a roll on so that your forwards who have just defended a set of six where there was potentially a six to go and therefore there's increased fatigue um, ensuring they're ready to go in defense for the next set. I, I think that's why having a, a, a meter eater for a wing is so important. Now, we compare Brian Toto there with 245 average run meters. Now, last year, Staines only averaged 87 run meters. Yeah, right. And within that, there was only 21 tackle breaks. Now, let's be completely honest here. We're, I'm comparing him there with Brian Toto, who is uh, you know the best wing in the game. But I do think, all things considered, in the modern game, although Charlie Staines is a fantastic finisher... I probably would put him in the not that great category um, for the fact that I I think defensively he was poor. He made 63 tackles last year and did miss 18. So that's just over, what, one every four tackles miss, one every three, somewhere around there. And I don't think he offered the Panthers enough in terms of his early hit-ups, only averaging 87 metres. He did the job on the wing, and I understand that he does the job scoring-wise. But I think so a with more, my yeah. three criteria there, he only fits into the do the job for one. I think the others, he falls into the not that great. And so two out of three, I've got to put him not that great. I think based on those stats too, I'd put him below Simonson. I would, or Simonson. Uh, sorry, man, if you're watching, sorry, dude. Like, I <laughs> we apologize, but I'm not 100% sure. I should have, I should probably know. But uh, we'll figure it out this year when I'm doing the live streams of the games. But uh, I would probably put him based on those stats because that's another reason why I have content creators who come on here alongside me because it's all well and good for me to have an opinion. But then again, you know, you're, you're bringing some stats, Ram Stats guys bringing heap of stats, which is awesome. You know, we're, yeah. we're really getting into a few more statistics. And that's why you need multiple people to kind of talk through it because a lot of people just want to think their own, that they're the smartest person on the planet. It's like, okay, cool. But yeah, I'd be happy to put him below Simon. So would you agree? Yeah, I would say at this stage of his career, and let's not get it twisted. He is only 21 years old. He won't sit in this category for the rest of his career. Um, he's just sort of had that steep progression, a steep learning curve, sorry, where we sometimes see players come in uh, at a high standard and continue to progress. And sometimes we see players come in like Staines where they score five tries, they're on top of the world. And then, you know, the reality of the NRL week in, week out, the grind of getting yourself up and ready. Um, sometimes it just takes time for younger players to adjust to that. And there's no shame in that at all. Absolutely. All right, well, let's move on now to Cody Ramsey here of the Dragons. Are you happy to put him outside of Unproven or would you like to be putting him into a spot? 
He did play 18 games last year. Overall in his career, he's played 21. So not a full season yet. So 18 games is still a decent amount to go off though. Yeah, I'm going to go back and flick. So Charlie Staines has played 23 games in his career and we've put that in and not the great. Um, Ramsey's only played two less. So let's maybe let's make a blanket rule. Anything under twenty, we go unproven potentially. Yeah, I reckon so. Like in the same sense, like it's still we still have seen I guess enough out of them to make a decision. But with being yeah. under twenty, it's just like it is pretty outrageous to to be throwing him in because the, the fact that I'm even saying that probably means he more than likely will go into the not that great section based off what we've seen yes. because I'm arguing for unproven. So um, up to you. Well, do you want to do you want to do under twenty games? <sighs> Yeah, let's do under 20. Let, let's keep a blanket rule there so that it's fair across all. Um, you know, later in the video, we're going to someone like Selwyn Cobbo. You know, on potential alone, you can argue quality. But yeah. realistically, unproven, we haven't seen enough yet. So I think under 20, I reckon we'll blanket that rule. It's fair. On potential alone, I could think Selwyn Cobbo could be a late, mate. He's looking yeah. absolutely fantastic. But uh, let's move into Corey Oates here for the Brisbane Broncos. He's potentially coming back out here. Uh, I believe he will come back out. The Broncos do have a little bit of decision-making to do in regards to their fullback, their wings and whatnot, uh, especially their fullback position, which might impact the wings, is what I'm saying here. Uh, Corey Oates is probably the epitome of a do-the-job player. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just before we step up, did we, did we say Cody Ramsey into the bottom of not that unproven. great? or with Unproven. So, yep, 21 games. So, we'll, we'll just bump that down. Uh, on to Corey Oates. Yeah, 14 games last year, only the four tries. Look, Corey Oates a few years ago would be up there with elite. There's no argument there, but he has had a Maybe bit of... Maybe top end quality a few years ago. I don't know if he was ever elite. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair also. Um, he's 27 now, so still relatively young, but I just think last year, the chopping and the changing, I want to be a back row, and the coaches are saying, no, you're a wing. And I think ultimately for Corey, it comes down to, it's not what you want, it's what's, what's best for your team. Yeah. And I think when Corey Oates is at his best on the wing, he's up there in quality, like you said. Uh, but last year, I've got to go do the job. He did average 162 metres, which is awesome. It really did help his team in that regard. Uh, but only four tries and only 14 games for the year. It wasn't the Corey Oates we've seen in the past, so... I'm just going to put it smack bang in the middle there, do the job. Yeah, I just think if I was getting a play right now, I still wouldn't mind having Corey Oates. This is how I think. I wouldn't mind having him personally, uh, but obviously not at the Titans. This is just a general, 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 general kind of thinking process. But I wouldn't mind Corey Oates, but I don't think he'll ever do anything unbelievable like he has done in the past. And I don't think he's going to be incredibly bad. He was really bad in one game, I remember. I can't remember what game it was, but he was really bad in one game. Besides that, he's going to do his job. He's going to do his winger's job. And, you know, he's a big body and, and has a bit of pace on too. But uh, we'll put him in do the job. They only play there for now, but I guarantee you there'll still be quite a few that go into that area. Uh, next up here, we go to the Gold Coast Titans, our boys, uh, Corey yes. Thompson. I'm looking forward to this one because I really like what Corey Thompson does for the Titans. I guarantee you that the general consensus will have him and do the job. And honestly, I probably am going to... I will probably put him at the top end of that. But on a, I, would, I would genuinely put him at the bottom end of quality. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I know that that could be my bias showing through. I'm a huge fan of Corey. But on stats alone, I believe last year, if he did not injure his ankle in round eight, Absolutely. he would have made his state of origin debut there for the Maroons. I thought he was better than Kyle Felt this year. I thought he was better than Xavier Coates this year, who played majority of the games there for Queensland on the wing. Let's look at the stats here. Now, he averages 156 metres, and he had 79 tackle breaks. And his early hit-ups... Now, he's not quite as small, dynamic, and powerful as Brian Toto, but he does offer the Gold Coast Titans a very similar skill set. Um, on the year he had last year, it was awesome. And if things go a little bit different, he would have been scoring the match-winning try to put the Titans past the first week of the finals Come on, for the man. first time in you over a decade. You have to remind me of this shit. You have to <laughs> remind me of that game against the Roosters. My God. It's, um, it's devastating. But, you know, if history was just switched a little bit, we're talking about Corey Thompson as a hero of the Gold Coast Titans scoring that try. That would have meant so much for us fans. Um, I think all things considered, at this stage of his career, he is, I believe, 28. 31, actually. My apologies. He is getting yeah, well, a bit old, but I think he's at the bottom end of quality yeah. or the very top of do the job. Yeah, I think maybe the later we go in, into this tier, uh, into this this list here, we'll probably decide whether we'll drop down to the top and do the job or he'll stay at, at say, the lower end of quality. And for the time being, I, I think a lot of people will, will not understand how much that he does bring 
to the Titans. And also, if you go back to my previous streams at the beginning of this year, or last year, sorry, if you go back to the beginning part of the, the season, in round eight or nine before he went down, I was saying he was our best player. I was loving him. I was loving Feeder, yeah. But I was also saying Corey Thompson is, is, is one of our best players. So, from take it from two guys who, who watch our game. I watch every game. game. But the same every sense, game carefully. Yeah, and we obviously know about our players. I'm talking him his bottom end quality, but he still might go do the job. But he's a fantastic player nonetheless. Next up here, we do have Daniel Tupo from the Tuxtus, the Roosters. It's going to be an interesting year for them. Maybe not as high as he used to be, but still up there. Uh, what would you say? I'd say quality, or if not elite, actually, for Daniel Tupo. I definitely have him on... quality minimum. Yeah, absolutely. Quality minimum, and I think there's an argument for elite. I've probably got him in the top five wingers of the game. Um, he's probably up there with the Josh Adokars, Brian Tottos, if I'm honest. 15 tries again last year. He's just ultra consistent. I mean, if we go throughout his career here, uh, 15 tries, 11 tries, 5 tries, uh, 8 tries he was injured that year, 11, 10, 16, 14, 14, 14. Um, so besides his debut year of 2012, there's been one year where he was heavily injured. He only played the 17 games there and he's still got the 8 tries. So one year where he slipped under 10 tries. On the basis of consistency, on the basis of him being a representative player for the Blues, um, on the basis of everything he brings to that Roosters side, including an average of 180 metres, I'm probably leaning to having him in elite. I would probably, be, I would, I, the more I think about it, I would personally, and I've said this and I'm going to say it again so that people understand it, obviously I'm wearing a Chicago Bulls show right now. You know, I love my American sport, so I think about if I'm going to draft someone and who I would want over the other. I'm not really mm-hmm. thinking about age, I'm just thinking about kind of what they bring right now. I would probably take Tupo over Alex Johnson. And if I said to you, let, let, let's pretend we're, we're, we're drafting wingers here, and I said to you, Josh Adokar isn't available and neither is Brian Toto. You're probably looking at someone like Daniel Tupo as a very real option for the next pick, if not maybe Alex Johnston. But he'd definitely be at the front of your mind for the next pick behind those two, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I'd be probably happy to put him in between Toto and, and Johnston on our list right now. Are you agreeing? Yeah, I'd agree with that completely. I think that's the perfect place for him at this stage. All righty. Well, next up here, let's move to the West Tigers. And we've got David Nofaluma. Well, um, good. I'd probably put him... Uh, he's a good player. Obviously, he scores a lot of tries there for a really struggling team, which does really give me a, a nice little booster there for him. Uh, I, I do, obviously, look at the Tigers factor, and it's really tough to put high, give high ratings to players in that team because it truly is so difficult to watch their footy right now and just is what it is. And that's why it's a bit of a negative just because the team is on, even though really that shouldn't be what we're thinking about. I would probably still put him above Corey Thompson. I would put him above Corey Thompson also. Um, and if you asked me this question, Blaze, probably last year, I, I'm probably arguing elite. I thought he maybe should have made his Blues debut. That's how good I thought he was. I've just looked through the stats. Every single area he regressed this year. Yeah. Um, to sort of capture that in a snapshot, I would say um, fantasy. Obviously, that incorporates everything. Last year, an average of 49.7. The year before that, 484 this year, it's dropped to 37 and a half. So I think that does show, you know, if, if we want to blanket every stat, that's probably a good one to do it. Um, although it is fantasy, it's still, you know, a good stat to use in that regard. So I think he's at the top of quality. I think at his best, he's elite. But I think we've got to be realistic. And last year, he wasn't at his best. Whether that was due to chopping halves, chopping and changing in the halves with Dowie sometimes there and sometimes he's in the centre and sometimes Luke Brooks is playing well and he's on fire and sometimes he's shocking... Um, not an easy go for a winger, but I, I probably got him in quality for this stage. I think that, if, uh, like, yeah, look, he would have been elite uh, last year and whatnot, but I do also believe that uh, the loss of Harry Grant was too big there for the Tigers, <laughs> and obviously they have no attack there whatsoever. Yeah. And yeah, he was still able to get some stats going, but it is what it is. So um, I'll put him in quality, and I think he'll probably end up down near where Corey Thompson is the more we go into this. Um, but I, obviously, yeah, I think that he's still a great player. It's just mm-hmm. unfortunately the team he's at doesn't help him at all. Um, yep. But next up here, let's move on to the Newcastle Knights. And I believe it, it, well, it is Edric Lee. I believe he's only recently just been given another contract. Uh, he wasn't on the contract before, and now he is. What are your thoughts on Edric Lee? Yeah, I believe he was offered a train and trial initially, and they ended up just filling out that top 30 spot with him. So I'd imagine he's probably on a minimum deal this year, which I think is good for, for, for Knights fans. Um, at, at his peak within his career, you could probably argue a little bit more there. But um, he was an origin player only a few years ago albeit he, he probably never would have debuted if Queensland were close to full strength. But mm. the reason why it's really hard for me to rank Adric Lee is the last time we saw him play in season 2020, he was the Maroons wing. But we didn't see him play one game last year. So I can only really go off what we saw the year before. 
Um, he's you know averaged over 120 meters for the past five years of his career. So very strong ball runner, um, but he's just very very prone to make errors. Um, he consistently knocks the ball on um, more than a lot of wingers should. They should have a safe pair of hands. So uh, I'm probably, I've got to be honest, I've probably got him in not that great because yeah. I'm not even sure we'll see him again this year. So absolutely, yeah, man. It's, it's stiff, but I think not that great. No, look, I don't, I don't think it's stiff. I think that, yeah, look, a couple of years ago when he was at the Sharks, he was still okay, but in the same sense, he does drop the ball a lot. When he was originally at the Knights, he did drop the ball a lot. Was he at the Canada Raiders at one stage too? Um, well, he was for the Raiders in 2016. They were versing the Sharks. They were down by, four, uh, down by two points. He dropped the ball with no one in front of him. You know, they brushed it off. It's all good. Let's go again. Aiden sees it, passes him another ball to score a win, and he dropped it again. So two... Yeah. Crucial errors. And then he joined the Sharks the next year. So I was like, oh, what's going on here? But, yeah. um, you know, you just can't be an elite winger and make those crucial errors in huge moments, right? Yeah. Would you put him... I'd personally be putting him between Simmonson and Charlie Staines. I'd be putting him in between those two, yeah. Like, at his best last year, he was uh, was a rep player, sorry, in 2020. We didn't see him last year, so it's a tough one. But I, I think let's play it safe. Let's put him in between there. Yeah, and I don't think age on his side either really to change a great deal. I'm not even too sure how old he is, but I just don't... 29 like... years old at the moment he is. Uh, yeah, for a winger, that's obviously getting quite on. You know, uh, that's getting quite on. So it's exactly, with that explosiveness. Exactly right. And especially with him being a power kind of winger, it, it will be... It will be difficult. But the next one here, we do go to the Knights. And this is one that I really do like. We've got Inari Tuala here, who obviously really exploded onto the scene last year. Uh, Defensively, maybe not unbelievable, but I think his attack is incredible, dude. I really love what he does there, especially at a Knights team that really does obviously focus on the attack compared to defense. They got into the the, uh, top eight last year with literally minus 160-odd, 50-odd points differential, which was outrageous. And they came seventh, too. Uh, I... Don't I would still probably put him? I would still more than likely put him and do the job uh, as probably an upper ender. I really like what I see, but in the same sense, I just don't know if I can put him above the guys who've got the quality. I've got him and do the job also. I completely agree with you in, in the sense that he's an amazing attacking player. We saw his last game last year, a finals loss to the Eels, finished with a hat trick. He was phenomenal there. Um, but the interesting one for, for Chihuahua and why I think I can't put him in quality was he only switched to the wing in round 20 last year where he finished the season and then obviously played the finals game against the Eels where the Knights lost. Had he played the entire season there at wing? I think yes. Um, I could argue for him being into quality, but because we only seen him there at the tail end of the season, I'm leaning for do the job. I do think what you said with his attacking prowess, if he does play wing for this whole season, I think he'll be bumped up to quality. But for now, I'm happy with do the job. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah, we'll put him into the job. Are you going to put him above Corey Oates or below Corey Oates? I'm going to go above. Um, yeah. I think he's got age on his side there. And I think he's got a bit more pace as well. It's just the energy. Yes. I love it. I love the vibe that you get with him. When you just even hear a player's name, you get a vibe. And I guess what that's kind of what we do here. But in the same sense, when you, when you hear a player's name, Nara Tuala just feels like that attack and scoring prowess. And then when you get Corey Oates, you're like, he's going to give you a hard nose kind of bloody run straight the defense and try him. Yeah, I would have Tuala. And I would definitely take him in a draft in based on their playing skills rather than Necessarily the um, necessarily the age, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what it can do this year. But the Knights are going to struggle. Uh, next up here, if Knights fans are not going to like how I ended that, but it is what it is. George Jennings here for the Melbourne Storm. Ah, uh, this is going to be a difficult one. I would personally put him to do the job, though. You know what? This is controversial. But I'd have him in not that great if he wasn't at the Melbourne Storm. Now okay. he only lost three games last year, but in all three of those games, there were losses to the Panthers in the finals, and there were rounds two and three against the Eels and Panthers, of which they were close losses, sixteen to twelve to the Eels, twelve to ten with the Panthers. Now he had crucial missed tackles and crucial errors in all three of those losses. He does average one hundred and thirty-five meters. He's very powerful with the ball, and he's a great finisher, but. I believe that is because he is in with the, within this storm system. I believe if you take him out of this storm system, he's probably not that great. He didn't play too poorly when he was at the Eels and the Warriors uh, the season before. Uh, but because he's at the storm, because he's in such a professional system, I've got him in do the job. 
yeah, I've got it. I put him. I personally would put. Him, and this is. The, it's going to come down to pace again. I would nearly say I, I would put him above Corey Oti. I nearly would. I know what you're saying yep. in the sense that you can argue for not that great, but I think it just comes to the way the game is nowadays. If you're going back five years ago, I'm taking Corey Oates over him. But if you're going now with this the, the high yep. frenetic pace, I'd probably have to go with George Jennings. Do you agree? On facts alone, I agree with you there. You know, it's only my opinion that if he wasn't at the Storm, he wouldn't be um, as good a player. Am I correcting that? I could be completely wrong. It's only my opinion. Uh, um, yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't make necessarily... argument for a lot of Storm players, right? <laughs> I don't think he's going to be anything special in another team, if put it that way. I, I think the Storm obviously does really help his... his um, he does really help his stocks, yeah, yeah, and his development and whatnot. But it, it is what it is. You can only play with who you're playing. And I think that, yeah, he does the job of the Storm. I still think he would do the job. He did the job, as he said. He wasn't too bad at the Eels and the Raiders, I think he said. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, he wasn't anything exceptional. So, yeah, I would personally take him up Corey Oates. I think we'll chuck him in there um, for, for now. But let's move on now. We go to the Eels. The uh, Eels are in for an interesting time. This is their last real chance to kind of prove themselves, and they know that. I've heard people saying the last dance bullshit. Hey, guys, the Chicago Bulls, they got six, uh, you know, six uh, rings at that time. The Eels have not. So let's not uh, you know, compare to the last dance. Let's, uh, let's not. But obviously, uh, we, we do have Hayes Dunster here. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think Hayes Dunster, well, he's only got the 13, uh, the 14 games overall in his career. Um, obviously, debuting for Michael Jennings after he got popped by Yus- uh, Asada uh, before the finals. So what a way to debut on short notice and everything. Um, he, like we did, only, we've only seen 14 games from him, and I know that we did make a blanket rule that that should belong in unproven, which I, I think we should follow. Um, mm. But I also think that if we hadn't have put that blanket rule over, I'd probably put him in do the job. Um, he's not an amazing try scorer. We've only seen three tries out of him, but he averages over 100 meters, and a lot of those games he actually started off the bench also. Um, so I think there's a lot of development left in his game. He was the Eels Rookie of the Year last year, rightfully so. Um, I think he's got a big future. Uh, but just as per the sort of blanket rule we put over, um, he, he does have to go in the unproven, unless you want to change that. No, look, I think, I think I'm pretty happy to keep it that way. I think yeah. under 20 games is less than a season. And yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe we should be putting Hayes Sunsworth anywhere. And I, I do have high hopes for his potential. Uh, but at the same time, we're not doing this based on potential. It, it does come into account when players have played enough. But with the fact that he's only played, what you say, 14 games or something you said, uh, that's yeah, that's ridiculously low. So there's no way you can put him anywhere higher. But looking forward to his future. Next up, guys, we do have the Newcastle Knights again. We've obviously gone through Twyla and Edric Lee, and we do have Hamel Hunt in here. Now later on in a Knights nice jersey, you will see Stafford Zoa, who was at the Knights. There was going to be four Justin Lincoln positions of the two, but now there's only three there. So it comes down to, in my personal opinion, Twyla will get the spot, and then it'll be between Edric Lee and. Uh, and Harmon Hunt there. But then again, there is also a word that it might not be Tuala, which I think would be crazy. For me, man, uh, I'll let you go here first. I don't know an unbelievable amount of Harmon Hunt to, to, to really to, to, to say what I need to say. Has he, has he played a great deal of games? Uh, he's been around for a few years now at the Rabbitohs. He's, he's got over 108 career games. Um, I, I think what you're saying is correct. He probably will be on the wing there this year. Uh, previously, I probably would have had Stafford Toll, but as you just said, he won't be there anymore. He'll be at the Tigers. And so with Dan Gagai coming to the Knights, that more or less for me says they view Chuala as a winger from now on. And I think Jaime Hunt will take that other wing spot over Edric Lee. But here's the thing. Over 17 games last year, he did offer a lot in terms of early hit-ups, and he was relatively safe. Um, but in terms of attacking stats, I've, I've got a call spade a spade. Four tries, of which two of those were in one game, um, over, over 17 games. So only scored in three games. Zero try assists, only the 30 tackle breaks, and six line breaks all year. I don't think that's good enough attack for a wing. And although he does offer a lot with his early hit-ups, unless you're sort of bringing the full package. And as I went back to before, you know, the three criteria for a winger, you're finishing early hit ups and, and then sort of um, your, your X factor and, and what you bring to the side there. I think he only really satisfies one of those and that's the early hit ups he's offering. So I've got him right at the top of not that great. Yeah. Look, I'm going to, I'm going to take your word for it. Cause like I said, I haven't seen a great deal from him. So we'll put him at the top end of, uh, of not that great. Uh, look, it's going to be interesting to see uh, those Knights wingers. They all look relatively kind of how you're going. Uh, obviously, Edric Lee is, well, there's two of them now that are not that great. And one of them is in, in do the job there. So it's going to be weird uh, to see what the Knights do this year. Maybe not weird. But it'll be interesting to see what the Knights do this year. 
Um, that's a lot of you know, that's a lot of But that's a, it's a, it just feels a bit strange to me the the wing pairing that, that these guys are going to have. But hopefully, Harmon Hunt can can improve himself. Maybe even Edric Lee. Next up here, we go to the Brisbane Broncos, a team that people are talking about this year, whether it be positive or negative. But uh, there is a lot of things going on there. Jermaine Asako. Now he's jostling for position, whether it be fullback or wing or whatnot. I'm not too sure, uh, but I believe he'll probably go to the wing. I believe he'll probably go to the wing there over. You know, testing you, or even to an extent, Selwyn Cobo, who comes in a little bit later. Uh, look, I, I think Jermaine Sarko on the wing is actually pretty good, man. I wouldn't be putting him into necessarily quality, but I'd definitely be putting him at the upper end of do the job. Only for the wing, though. Fullback would be different and be lower. But for the wing, I have him a bit more upper there. And I could even, he, I could even listen to an argument of him being below Corey Thompson. Well, here's the thing. Up until round 13 last year, we saw him at fullback where it was just far too inconsistent with basic errors such as halftime whistles gone, Luke Brooks kicks, bat the ball dead. The half's over. And he shadows it to the try line and allows a Tigers player to score. It's very, very rookie hour there. And I, I agree with you. I don't think fullback's his best position. I'd argue that with, um, with Tessie New there and Selwyn Cobbo um, competing for the fullback spot, there's almost no way we see him there. Look, he's still got age on his side. He's only 25. He's a former rookie of the year. On the wing, it is definitely his best position. And he does join the Dolphins next year, which I think he's in desperate need of a fresh start. And mm. in, in a lot of ways, in desperate need of a st- stable coach yeah. that knows him. And that's Wayne Bennett. That's who he's played his best coaching under. So for now, I've got him in do the job. But I wouldn't be surprised if next year, back under Wayne Bennett, we see him sort of shoot back to his best form and potentially create some discussion for us to bump him into quality. Absolutely. So you're happy to put him at the top end to the job for now, though? I think so, yeah. In my top 20 wings last year, he actually did drop out completely of the top 20, uh, but that was mainly because he played a bunch of fullback. If we yeah. know he's locked in for wing, I've got him top end to do the job. Yeah, if, uh, if you're watching Kevin Walters, I know you're probably not, but if Kevin Walters is watching, please play him on the wing because even as a Titans fan, and Clark's a Titans fan too, but you know, even as a Titans fan, we, uh, we, we want to see him as a wing because he's a better winger. He is. He's a better winger. And uh, this is a year that Broncos have a lot to prove in regards to uh, Adam Reynolds coming in and uh, helping him out. But let's move on now to the, uh, I nearly said the Dragons here, Jason Saab. Uh, we've got Manly Seagulls, Jason Saab. This is going to be a very interesting one. I, I, I am going to tell you right now that I'm not going to be putting him into elite. I'm going to be putting him into quality. I would probably, um, look, there is a lot of aspects about his game that I love. I think that realistically, his best aspect is obviously his speed. We know that. There's no debate about that. But, there is also just a couple of things like I just don't know how well he would translate everywhere for me. And also, I just don't know overall, man. I, I, I love what he brings with his speed, but do, do you know what I'm saying here? I know what you're saying. And, you know, there's a real argument that if he isn't playing outside Tom Trevojevic, he doesn't score 26 tries and have 17 line breaks next year. I'm Why I'm going to make that argument? Well, he only had 37 tackle breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the basis of... It's, it's just not adding up is what I'm trying to say. That unless there's someone amazing setting him up for those sort of stats, which we know was Tom Trevojevic, I'm not sure he pumps out such impressive stats. I believe it was. It was, it was the first year where we see, seen him have a full season. And so I think I'm willing to give him benefit of the doubt that he will continue this. And if he does continue this, and we're talking purely from an attackive perspective, it is that dominant that you can argue he should be in quality. Um, if I bring up the tries last year, he finished third overall. Only Tom Trubovic and Alex Johnston had more than him. So on that basis alone, he does average over 100 metres, bringing the ball out from his own end. I'll put him at the bottom of quality, I think. Mm, I think, so this is the thing. You've got to remember as well with people watching this, and I don't care about what they think because they can let us know in the comment section. Like You can let us know in the comment section if you disagree with us. This is all what it's about. But I guarantee you people are going to put him in the league because they think because he scores a whole heap of tries and he's got fast yep. pace that it's exciting. He's a highlight package. He's a highlight reel. But in the same sense, there's us aspects of the game that he, he's not exactly unbelievable in. And also he's in a really good situation with the best fullback in the game that helps him. Um, I think they would have him in the league. But for me, I, I, I think Corey Thompson overall has a bit more to him in regards to a rounded aspect, a, ra- a rounded player. Yep. But are you taking in a draft, Jason Sal or Corey Thompson? Corey Thompson is more of a complete player, I think. I'm taking, I'm taking him over Jason Saab. But Jason Saab's very young. Uh, we know Corey's over 30 now. Jason Saab is 21. 
Mm. So yeah, you asked me this that's... question in three years and you know my answer. Yeah, look, I, I think right now. I think for people that need, you guys need to understand with how we're speaking that we love what he brings, but in the same sense, I guess there's a lot more to prove still. He is still in quality, mind you. Like we're not even, <laughs> we're, we're currently he's in the top six. You know, we yeah. are still saying he's an unbelievable player um, and people are probably going to say we're biased for Titans. If you actually listen to what we're saying, you'll know that we're not being biased for Titans. I definitely have him in quality, but I just think he's still got a lot more to prove in regards to not just being speedy and not just being buddy Tommy Tavoyevich is trying to get the ball out to him. But then again, you can only play with who you're playing with. Um, so we'll put him below Corey Thompson for now. We'll see how that goes. Uh, next up here, we go back to the uh, we go back to the Rabbitohs here. Jackson Paula. He's at the Rabbitohs. Yeah, he didn't get traded, did he? He's at the Rabbitohs, but there are talks that um, he's been training really well at centre from Jason Demetrio, and he's uh, put him forward as the man to replace um, Dan Gagai. But what's interesting is, from what we've seen from his career so far, there's a real argument he's an out-and-out winger. He hasn't really shown too many attributes to suggest he'd be great in the centres. But, I mean, yeah, last year he didn't play a game in the centres. He only played on the wing, losing one game, and that was the finals loss to the Panthers. So he had a great season. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I the thing is though is that I would have if I'm going to put him into a spot right now, I would put him probably in between Tuala and Isako. Tuala and Isako, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's in do the job. I think having him in not that great to be a bit stiff. We've only seen 25 games, but you know he has shown nine line breaks last year, um, nine tries. He averaged over 100 meters with the ball, um, and and only lost one game. Maybe below Tuala. Maybe below Tuala. Yeah, Trial's got a bit more experience on his side. We've had the uh, benefit of seeing a little bit more of his career. I'm happy to put him in between there, between Jennings and Shuala. Um, But yeah, it's going to be a tough one because I I would sit here and I'd say I think he could go higher this year. Um, But by all accounts, the coach is really looking at him as the man to replace Gagai in the centres, which I'm not sure I like, but we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, I, I can't remember who we had in the centres. I did that one the other day. Uh, obviously, you guys know probably by now. But in the same sense, like I, I think that he's okay. I think for now, he's okay. Uh, has potential. But then again, all these guys have potential. And does every, obviously have age on his side to, to prove us wrong. So, man, you were listening. Try to get yeah. a move on. Get a move on and get it rocking uh, this year. Uh, I know it's tough with the other so with no Reynolds and no Bennett. But it's going to be interesting to see how they go underneath, obviously, Demetrio. Uh, next up here, let's move on to Jaden Ockenbore here of the Dogs. Now, this man on my streams grinds my gears. I'm always getting into him. It's just, it just seems like he is always making mistakes, man. Whether he's knocking the ball on or he's making a bad defensive read. I don't know what it is, but I do think he has so much potential to be a really good player. Like, I just, I think he's so polarizing. But for, for right this second, man, I, I know a lot of people have put, probably put him up at, at the top of do the job, or even, I, I know a lot of people like him, but I just see so many mistakes in this game, dude. I'd, be, I'd personally, I'll listen to your argument, but I'd personally put him in that great for now. I, I, look, I've got to agree with you. I think. You look at his highlights package, he's steamrolled Cameron Smith, he's scored tries, he's finished games with 200-plus metres. But it's his it's his concentration lapses, right, Blaze? Absolutely, like yeah. That's he's the one. making these huge errors in the game. It's just little mistakes that shouldn't really happen from an elite sportsman. Mm. Um, and, and I'm friends with Jaden, I would say, personally. We do chat a bit, we, we text a fair bit. He's only 24. He's 108 kilos and almost 200 centimetres tall. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's got heaps of potential with that kind oh, of the, body structure. The potential is there. It's just eliminating those concentration lapses out of his game and staying engaged with the contest for the entire 80. If he does that, I think he could one day be a quality player. But for now, from what we've seen, and especially after the inconsistencies of last year and the errors, I've got him probably even below Charlie Staines, if I'm honest. I will also grant the fact that he's at the Bulldogs, which has had a horrible yeah. team. Uh, you know, they, they came last last year, definitively last as well. Uh, not even close, really, uh, in regards to the end of it. And he's a winger. So a winger is really reliant on the quality of a team. Yeah. No where you are, a usually winger will be really, really significantly require uh, a good team uh, to, to at least good halves to get you the ball. And unfortunately, <laughs> they've had really transitional in the halves section. Now, obviously, we do see them, you know, get a few more players. Obviously, on one wing, there's also going to be uh, Ado Carr, yes. Ado Carr. Yep, that's one wing gone, 100%. There's also- and I think the other one will probably even be Braden Burns or it could be Brent Naden. I don't think we'll see, well, I don't think we'll see Ockenball start next year unless of injuries. 
Well, there you go. Well, yeah, look, I would love to see kind of what he would do. And I believe that, honestly, he should be the starting guy there mm-hmm. over those guys. But in the same sense, it's up to, you know, Trent Barrett, who, for me, is the worst coach in the league. Um, and I will <laughs> I will find mm-hmm. that one to the end. Don't worry. There is a coach's team, maybe, that will be coming out. But, um, yeah, look, I would love to see him with the new team. But in the same sense, we'll see if he gets into that new team. I'd put him at the top end, not that great. Okay, I was thinking more towards the, the bottom, actually, probably. Really? But behind Charlie Staines just for just for the he last in the not that great well I just think he had too many errors last year he, he cost the Bulldogs a lot with a with a lot of errors and defensive reads whereas Charlie Staines were saying not that great because he just wasn't in the contest Ball was in the contest he just wasn't in it mentally he was fading out and, I'm and, and not lie, man. I want to put Charlie Staines above Edric Lee yeah I'm happy for that I think we can make that change right now I'd agree with that and if anything, because I would still, because I think the ceiling for Ockenbore is still quite high, which is what I'm getting into my brain that puts him a little bit yeah. higher. If anything, so if you want to, so I've got him right now at the top. You've got him below Staines, right? Yeah, I've got him last for not that great. But like I said, the potential's there. I'm just not You have him behind any. Edric Lee too. I would, yeah. I think Edric Lee is probably a safer option, more experienced option. Okay, well, let's put him below stains above Edric Lee. I'm happy. We'll go. We'll go okay, we'll meet in the middle. But yeah. I, I, if I can revisit my argue earlier that, you know, someone like George Jennings, if we swap, because on my screen, they're, they're below each other right now. Um, if we swap the jerseys between those two men, it's probably George Jennings who's not that great. And it's Ockenbore and just do the job. A yeah. lot of this comes down to the team and who's playing um, inside of you. And, I disagree. I'll say Ockenbore could be higher. Yeah, well, I, I, I think so also. But, but, but the main point being, you know, who was facilitating for Ockenball last year? Who was setting him up out there? They exactly. didn't have any... That's what I was making my point regards to the Bulldogs then and Bulldogs maybe yeah. now. So. But I'm, I'm just going off what I've seen, so that's why I've got him so low. But if we're going off potential, I think he could be right up there with one of the best. He's such a big body. He's so powerful. Um, he's just got to fix a few things in his game from my perspective. Absolutely. Yeah, well, there we go. So we've got him down there towards the bottom and not that great, but we still have given him quite a high rap in saying that. Uh, yeah. But let's move on now to Jesse Arthurs. Now, it's got him in the Broncos jersey, but I believe he's the Warriors, maybe? On a one-year loan to the Warriors, yeah. and he is signed to the Broncos for 2023. So he will return there for one more season. And he originally played a little bit at the Titans. I know he came originally from yep. the Titans center. as a centre. Uh, look, I think he's probably been in the, the league enough time now to kind of have a decent gathering about what he's probably going to do. Uh, yep. How many games has he played, you know? 29 overall, 11 okay, last year. Yeah, so we will be ranking him. I'm not going to lie, man. I, I'm, I, I don't see... I don't see anything special, uh, and, and that's and that's it. Might it might hurt him to hear that, but I just don't see any I, potential. Wise, I've got higher potential for a lot of other guys in this league, and it's disappointing because I remember him coming for the Titans, and I love what I've seen, but I just haven't seen it. So for me, I'll be putting this not that great, and I wouldn't be putting him. I wouldn't put him towards the bottom end. There. Here's one for Jesse Arthurs, and I don't know if a lot of people know this. He was the man the Melbourne Storm were adamant would replace Billy Slater when he was there. He played under 20s for them. He did so much training with Billy Slater. Anthony Seabold was actually one of his assistant coaches there at the Storm. And so he, was, he, he really did fit the Titans. Yes, he only won two games with us, but we had a horrible season. But Jesse Arthurs himself looked very impressive at centre, and I believe he should have stayed with the Titans. Mm-hmm. He opted to follow Anthony Seabold to the Broncos, of we know how that ended up. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. they, they sucked under Seabold. He was removed one year into a five-year deal. And so Jesse Arthurs went to this club because he wanted to play for a particular coach. That didn't pan out. Uh, there is an argument. Look, 11 games last year, five tries. So almost a 50% strike right there. But averaging 65 running metres, that's not good enough yeah. for a wing. That would be in the bottom 10 for wings in terms of average metres. On sheer stats alone there, he is not getting in. He's not having early hit-ups and he's not giving his team enough. Um, so I probably got him b- b- below Edric Lee, if not oh, in between really? Edric Lee and Jade Nockenboy. I don't have him much higher. I'd put him, uh, then that's the thing. I hate to do it because I, I really I feel for him, but I wouldn't put him last. I would be putting him in last yep. right now below Edward Lee. So hopefully he can prove us wrong. You know, he can rejuvenate his career at the Warriors and then, yep. you know, go back to the Broncos and whatnot. And he can Still only 23, right. so age is on his side. Exactly right. But 23 is also on that brink of you're starting to get to where your peak should be. Uh, so yep. he's, a, he's got a long road ahead of him. So hopefully he can do it this year and in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. Next on here, we will be going to a guy who's on the opposite end of the scale in regards to age. We've got Jordan Rapana here. Uh, Rapana from the Raiders. 
a couple of years ago. He might have been. Um, did he? No, he was never centre, was he? Am I getting something? Um, wrong? He was always a wing. Drug. Yeah, he was always a wing, and he was also he was always outside of Le Lua back in the day, wasn't he? Yeah, it was Le Pana they called it. Yeah, that's right. Um, he did play one game of centre last year, but it was just due to injuries at the end of the year, and it wasn't his best game. Yeah, it's it's. Oh, I definitely think he's a winger. Uh, it's this is a tough one because I know in recent past he has honestly he has been up there in elite, maybe mm. around that 2016 age. Obviously, it's tough because I don't even necessarily know if I've still got him in quality, but I think he's much better than the guys that we currently got into the job, which is why I kind of want to tear in between. I just think that he has, and this could be a thing to do with the Raiders too. They've regressed significantly to what we, and we're going on yep. the last season plus more, but the last season is also very relevant in our minds. And the Raiders, unfortunately, aren't able to get him the ball right now. And he's, he's struggling, in my personal opinion. I would be probably throwing him in to do the job at the top end, above Osako. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think what's really hard is if you ask me for the first 10 rounds of the year, I wouldn't argue. I think do the job for certain. I don't think he had that strong of a start to the year. Uh, but then his finish to the year was really, really good up until round 20 when he got moved to fullback just due to injuries there. Um, we know his best position's wing. We've seen uh, he's got 159 games in his career. Most of those are on the wing. He's now 32 years old. And so that's what makes it really hard to rank him here because yeah. 32 years old, we know he's not probably going to get much better. He's, he's had his peak. His start to the season was poor. His finish to the season was awesome. And so if he can continue that finish to the season into next year, he's at the bottom end of quality for me. If he goes back to his early form last year, he's at the bottom of do the job. And yeah. so I think we meet in the middle between there and go top of do the job. Yeah, I still think he's. I still think there's a decent gap between him and Asako there, uh, but yeah. I also think there is a relative gap in regards to uh, Saab and, uh, and and Rapana there. But in the mm-hmm. same sense, I would personally, yeah, I would prefer to put him right at the top there because he needs to. Uh, hopefully, they return back to form this year because last year was not great. And yes, he had a bit of a stint there, which was good. But in the same sense. He, yeah, he's not what he used to be personally, and age isn't on his side as well. So hopefully this year he backs it, backs goes back to his best with the Raiders. Uh, next up here, uh, we have got Joseph Sawali here. I would be putting him in improvement. I'd say elite because I read the newspaper and that's all we read about <laughs> how he's. Next, I mean, talk about pressure for a seventeen-year-old. Um, he was the next Latrell Mitchell. He was the next Greg Inglis. He was the next Darren Lockyer. Um, and he was the next Jesus Christ because um, <laughs> that's how great the papers were making this kid out to be. Yeah. And so when he came into the league and played well, but didn't score a hat trick, yeah. everyone was saying, what's all the hype for? This guy sucks. And it's like, well, not really. He had a fantastic debut for a 17-year-old. Mm. It's just he didn't live up to the papers' massive expectations they were placing on he him. He couldn't have said it any better, man. Like, truly, those papers, they set him up for massive failure. Massive they didn't failure. didn't give him a break. Um, he's only played five games. He's unproven for now. In the future, he'll be right up there, though. I've, I've seen a lot that I like out of him. Yeah. Um, I think he could start for the Roosters next year. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, I'd have to have a, a bit of a closer look there. Uh, but if he doesn't start, he'll definitely be... There's only know, really him and, um, there's only really him and Tupo there, man. I'm pretty certain he'll start. Yeah, I'm just trying to find my um, Roosters lineup now, which I am having some difficulties. I'll just open up the um, Photoshop file itself. Uh, some of their back position lineups are obviously locked in and some are available with the Morris brothers um, leaving the yeah. club there. Um, I just think that they'll probably utilise this time now with obviously the loss of Brett Morris that uh, they'll really throw him in and, and, and give him some time, especially with Sam Walker there. They threw him into the deep end. Uh, mm-hmm. He's obviously a very young bloke, and I think Suwali will now be thrown into the deep end, especially with the lo- loss of Brett Morris. So they're going to try and build him. And even, yeah. look, they've got such a good team, man, that truly, honestly, regardless of his age, he still probably should be lapping up quite a few tries. I agree. Here's how I've got the Roosters. I've got Teddy fullback, my wings are Suwali and Daniel Tupo. Yeah. And I think Paul Momorowski and Joseph Marnie will be in the centres there. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have been suggesting Paul Momorowski should go into the wing, which no. would remove Suwali from the side. And we would see either Adam Kieran or Billy Smith in the centres. I disagree no with that. I think Suwali should be the wing there. I've, yeah, no way, no way, not no, not. And I mean, Momorowski just won a premiership at centre, right? I, I think you sign a premiership winner, you're playing where they won the premiership. You don't move him out of. Well, position. there's no point buying, you know, bringing in Momorowski if you're not going to play him. There's literally no point there because he is still a decent enough player. I don't believe he ranked highly on our list, but in the same sense, 
he's still a quality enough player. Uh, I think he's into the job, maybe. Uh, but yeah. I think he was upper end. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, we'll put him into we'll put him into the top of my improvement. Uh, to be honest with you, because yeah. actually, let's rank him quickly here. So we've got uh, Suwali is number one. Number two is are we going Hayes Dunster or Cody Ramsey? Do you reckon? Hayes Dunster for me. I, I, although I I've seen a few more games out of Ramsey, I've liked a bit more what I've seen from Dunster. Absolutely. I agree with that one. So there we go. Suwali, Dunster and Cody Ramsey. Some really good talent coming through. And obviously, hopefully, Suwali scores 700 tries this year, like the media will tell you. Uh, maybe not anymore, actually. They've gone off him. Uh, but next up here, we will be going to Josh Adokar. Let's see where he ranks here, because obviously, he's now at the dogs. I think this is going to be the year that's going to prove whether he is a just a pace man that was obviously uh, really beneficial at the Melbourne Storm, which is, you know, the the mecca when it comes to the mm-hmm. quality teams. The Bulldogs are a, a different story altogether. I think that based on what we've seen, obviously we're going to put them into elite, but I also am struggling in regards to what I know might come this year. I definitely agree with you, man. I mean, you look at the stats here. 23 tries last year from only 22 games. I would dare say he'd be one of the only players to play so many games and have more tries. For me, he's the second best winger in the game behind Brian Toe. I think Brian Toe just offers a little bit more in terms of um, starting the sets. Um, But with that being said, Josh still does average 128 metres. He's locked in for basically any rep team he's eligible for there on the wing. But here's the reason why I agree with you. And we go through some of the Bulldogs recruits they've had in recent years. Cottridge. We go Kotrick. He wasn't at his best at the club, outside back. Corey Allen was playing for the Maroons, um, filling in for Latrell Mitchell and looking awesome. Hasn't been the best. Kyle Flanagan. Um, these are all players that have signed with the club and they were great at their previous clubs. And in the Bulldogs system, they just didn't flourish. Um, another example, I know this is a forward, um, Luke Thompson. He was the best forward in the Super League at the Bulldogs. He, he, he finished the year strong, but for the majority of it, he wasn't at his best. And so history shows us that players that accept the big money offer and go to the Bulldogs, their careers don't always continue at the same level. In fact, history shows us they actually regress and drop off. Mm. And... And when we talk about the Melbourne Storm system, they're the best. When we talk about some of the wingers they've had there, they have been the product of a great system and they have had a very specific role. And that is to finish the incredible work of players like Cameron Smith, Cameron Munster, etc. Can he replicate that form without the big guns inside him setting him up at the Bulldogs? I don't think so. I think we will see Josh Adokar drop off a little bit. Agreed. Whether that's towards the end of elite or back into quality, that remains to be seen. Yeah, look, that's the thing. Well, I think we still probably put in a lead for now. And, and yeah. as the second best player too, I think we have to put yep. him there uh, because I still think there is a gap from what we've seen between him and, and Tupo and also Johnson. But in the same sense, yeah, look, I think that we probably will see. And I hope we are wrong. I really hope we are wrong. But I do believe we'll see a bit of regression here this year with a team that is not in the storm because people have got high hopes for a team that has no chemistry yet. Yes, the players are going to build up and say they've got chemistry and whatnot, but that's just not how it works. Um, so, yeah, look, best of luck to Josh Avakar at a new team and at the current Wooden Spooner team. Uh, but, yeah, he's got the quality to do it if he does get the, uh, get, does get the ball there. But it's yep. an issue. Next up here, let's move on to the uh, Tigers. Uh, Ex-Warrior man, Ken Mamalo. Whoa, at the Warriors, he probably would have been, I would say, well, definitely quality. Would you still have him in quality, though? I would have him at top of do the job now, I think. Yep. And I, I'm looking at my top 20 here for the midway mark of 2021. He actually dropped out of the top 20 for me. Um, to start the season, I had him in the top three. Um, he was coming off a Dalian wing of the year season where he was phenomenal. Um, he still did a lot of great work for the Tigers there. I mean, still had 21 games last year with 15 tries. 14 line breaks. So a lot of those he did break the line and go on to score seemingly um, and almost averaged 160 metres, just under. I loved how he finished his career for the Warriors last year. He scored the hat trick there against the Storm. thought that was a really special moment. Um, but I do think his career has regressed a little bit and he hasn't been his absolute best. So I don't even at top of do the job right now. I would put him below Jordan Rapana. Okay, yeah, I can. I, I think so, yeah. In between, as long as he's up there towards the top of the job, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, like you asked me this question 12 months ago. He's elite for me. Probably elite. Only top three for elite, yeah. Wow. Only a year or two ago, but... I would have put in very, very top of quality. I don't know if I could ever have said actually legitimately elite, but uh, that's why I still, even with elite, I'm still kind of with Tupac and Johnson kind of kind of gets me a little bit, but in the same sense, I, they absolutely have to be there. But for me, yeah, Mamala probably 
a couple of years back, even a year back, would have been for me top end for quality. Um, See, a lot of people actually did disagree with me, like you just did. And I just went back and had a look at the stats there. The last three years, he averaged 176, 187, and 190 meters, which I believe is it's safe to say that's within the top it's ridiculous four yeah. of all wings. Mm. Um, and so I just thought from what he was bringing there alone. Um, and then if I bring up the tries for those years, it was 17, 5, and 8. So he wasn't scoring necessarily too many tries, but the way he started sets was so powerful. Yeah. That's why I ranked him so high. A lot of people disagreed. It, it sounds like you probably disagreed, had him a little bit lower there on quality, um, which I think there's arguments for both ways there. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll chuck him below Rapana there, uh, but yeah. definitely above Asako. Uh, next up here, we will be moving on to Kevin Naguama, who has also gone to the Chooks, as I just realised that. Actually, that was another one that we had to, uh, that w- w- is there. But yeah, he was at the Tigers. He also has played uh, multiple places. But yeah, he's at the Chooks now. Yep. Uh, don't believe he'll get the starting spot. Uh, obviously, he used to be very good, but I think he's coming from the Super League, isn't he? He is coming from the Super League, Blaze, where he has won the grand final three years in a row with St. Helens as their centre, um, which makes it really difficult to rank him, right? I mean, how much do we include Super League form when we know he left the NRL? As, a back, he wasn't... as a back, mate, I'm giving it 0% in regards to comparison. And that's right. And so we go back to four years ago when he left the NRL. He actually left the Tigers because he just simply wasn't good enough anymore. He wasn't NRL standard and he wasn't consistent enough. So I don't know how to, rank, I don't know how to score this. I mean, if we go off his recent form, he's right up in elite or quality. But we know Super League outside back form does not matter. Look at Dan Sargentson. Look Sam at Zach Tompkins. Hardacre. Um, look at all these players that have come over. Uh, you, you said another one there, did you? Sam Tompkins. Look at Sam Tompkins. There's three prime examples of... He fans. was great. Came down here, was shocking, and it's gone back down. It's great again. And killing it. Same as Zach Hardacre. He won the Dallium equivalent over there. Came to the Panthers. Played relatively poorly. Um, Dan Sargentson. We were don't told he's, he's the next big thing. Don't start me on Dan Sargentson. Oh, like. You know what annoyed me about that? They went back and won the premiership in Super League, him and Joe Greenwood, and they uploaded a photo of their rude finger with the premiership ring on to the Titans. Yeah, it's like, dude, so who are you was, kidding? We, we sucked and you couldn't even start for us, and now you want to... <laughs> Like that just shows how bad the Super League is. You couldn't start for the wooden spin NRL team. You want to... I don't know. That's just no, crazy. But yeah, awful. the proof is in the pudding. Um as far as where to rank him now, this is the hard part. Let's do, let's just play it safe and go smack bang in the middle to do the job, maybe. Or uh, I would personally, based off maybe what I know from past, I would probably put him above Jackson Paulo. Uh, I would personally prefer an Ari Tuala. Yeah, let's put him there. Uh, and I mean, it's so difficult to rank him. Um, just too hard to incorporate Super League form. It doesn't, it, especially for outside as backs. Back, as backs. Relate. I don't. If, if it's a forward, then I absolutely would really utilise that Super League form because they're mm-hmm. a lot of different breed there. Um, yeah, we'll put him into the middle there. I'll do the job below Chuala. Uh, next up here, we will go to Kyle Felt and uh, scores a lot of tries. Obviously, has one of the most famous tries in history for the Cowboys. With that being said, I think he is literally the epitome of a do-the-job player and I think that he does get his job done very well. He's a great player. But in the same sense, he's not at that next level. Yeah, I'm, I'm in between either the bottom of quality for Felt or the top of do the job. I wouldn't like to see him anywhere else. Um, 74 tackle breaks and he did average 132 metres. Um, so he does have a relatively very powerful hit up. Um, we saw him play two or three games for the Maroons there last year, I think two. Uh, but he wasn't. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, but he, he probably he shouldn't wasn't his best. No, you're right. And if Corey Thompson was fit, I think he, w- he wouldn't have been there. Um yeah, I think for the fact that, you know, if we're talking about rep footy, he didn't play that well for Origin. He didn't play bad, but he didn't play his best and he probably wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for injuries. So um, I think we'll probably put him at the top of the do the job. Are you putting him above Rapana? How old's Kyle Felt? 29. He's won a premiership, Rapana. Yeah, I probably... Yeah. yeah I probably, probably would. I think he's a lot more consistent than Rapana too, which is probably yeah. what I would be looking at there. Obviously, I'm not looking at his Origin form there, but I don't think Rapana has played Origin, has he? Uh, no, he has played for the New Zealand Kiwis. Oh, so yeah, that's right. Of course. I'm not sure play. how many appearances. I will check that for you. Um, yeah, he's been eligible for the Kiwis. He's played for them the last couple of years. Uh, 11 games for the Kiwis between 2016 and 2018. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I, I think based on consistency, I'd put, put Carfell above Rapana there. I think that, yeah, there's just... The thing is for me is that nowadays does not suit him as well. You know, that's why we've got players like uh, Jason Saab there, nothing limited there. Even Corey Thompson who has a bit more pace about him too. And he's also got that safety net. So, yep. uh, yeah, that's the difference in my opinion. But the next one here, 
is obviously Mr. Dostoviti. Dostoviti, Mark Asimo himself, he's injured, has been injured for quite a bit actually. Uh, I think a lot of people's thoughts of him have gone and regressed based on this. Uh, but for me, mate, I'm still going to be boarding him in quality. Yeah, I, I ranked him fifth last year. I only had Johnston, Tupo, Fox and to- above him. Um, and so for me, I think we probably cut the elite off at four or five players. I don't think too many other people would make it there. It's, it's really tough because he, he did play so many games just last year, but we've seen him at his best. We know what he's capable of. You know, he still averaged 130 metres, had 17 tries, 81 tackle breaks and 19 line breaks. His defence has improved a lot recently. If I don't have him at the bottom of elite, I've got him at the top of quality. I've been putting him above Nofaluma, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I've got a distraction. I'd have him above Saab and I'd have him above Thompson. I'd have him right at the top. Well, Nofaluma for us right now is at the top. Shall we move him down? Okay, so my quality, I've got it in the order of Thompson, Saab and Nofaluma. So I must have forgot to update that. Well, Look, regardless of who's behind him, he's at the top for me of quality, Mike Acevo. The thing for Nofaluma is the stats that you gave before probably argue for him to be top of those two guys. I think Saab is yep. still relatively unproven, as we spoke about. And Corey Thompson, yep. I think, is that strength bang in the middle. So, uh, yeah, I, I, either way here, we're talking about Mike Acevo going at the top anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll go Acevo, Nofaluma, Thompson and Saab. Yeah, I think that's... I agree with that. Just just because the stats you also gave me. Otherwise, I probably would have been putting Cora, but then again, that could be a bit of bias speaking uh, overall. Uh, But next up here, we do go back to the the Warriors. He's not the Dogs, the Warriors. The Warriors, Marcelo Montoya. Uh, This is... Actually, I just want to quickly point out as well on Mike Asivo, because I think a lot of people will be like, "Eh, he hasn't been at his best recently. Mike Asivo was one of the biggest, dominant, most, you know, built wingers that we've seen in a long time. And I think that when you're seeing him play, uh, you're going to always see a quality performance if he gets the ball in the position that he needs. And that, that might be a negative that you can also see, uh, that he doesn't get the ball as much. But honestly, if you put him in any team, he probably does really, really well. And I actually think he does better at most of the teams than Parramatta. I don't necessarily think Parramatta suits him greatly. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love everything that Michael Simo has to offer. Would you disagree with anything I said? Oh, I completely agree with everything. I think we just... Recency bias, he really shines through in footy. And so because he did play a few games injured there, it wasn't at his best. We forget all the incredible moments he's had before that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably the most powerful winger we've seen. And any time you're drawing comparisons to Sammy Radradra, who was voted in the Australian... Uh, sorry, not the Australian. Who was voted in the NRL team of the decade. Um, I mean... Come on, he, he didn't even play footy before that. and he, he made the team of the decade. Anytime you're drawing comparisons to that man, you're in pretty good company. Absolutely. So, yeah, we're jumping to uh, the top end of quality there. Next up here, uh, like I said, we're going to Marcelo Montoya. And uh, I'd be probably leaning more towards the not that great section. Maybe at the top. Um, uh, very much average- at the top, Absolutely. Yeah, averaged 123 metres last year. And I thought he did improve um, on previous seasons. The thing that makes it difficult was half the times he played centre, half the times he played wing. Mm, uh, he probably played Benta in the centres, which makes it hard to rank. Um, I'd probably have him up there above... Uh, in between Heimel Hunt and Bailey Simonson, I think I'd have Marcelo Montoya. I like what I saw out of him last year. Um, and I think he's a big chance to start again this year. So I'd have him there. Yeah, I'd probably put Simonson above him. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I would put... Um... I would nearly say I'd put Simonson above him, actually. Is that what you said, or is that not what you said? Originally, I said I'd have him in between Heimel Hunt and Simonson, but I'm willing to drop him one as well. I won't argue that too much. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy if you want to put him there. Either. I don't really, it doesn't really matter. It's just like Simon. Yeah. Um, no, we'll, we'll put him above Simonson just because he does still have a decent... Some, I think he's probably proven a bit more than Simonson so far. So and he's more of a chance to start in round one also. Yeah, but well, there you go. That's another reason. So, yeah, we'll put him in between them. Uh, next up, he will go to Matt Ikvalu, who is at the Cronulla Sharks now, not at the Roosters. And uh, it's, the Sharks are a tough team to read this year. A lot of people have them high. I am a little bit more concerned uh, than most uh, in regards to a lot of aspects there. But at least they're trying to improve. At least they're doing uh, some bits there. Craig Fitzgibbon also comes along with uh, Ikvalu, so he knows him well. Uh, Ikvalu, I think I'll be putting him into the job. I've been putting him at the very bottom end of do the job. We've never seen him out of the Roosters system. Um, We've seen him score five tries coming in late for Brett Morris, who was injured in the warm-up. But let's be honest, if he's in any other side, he's probably not scoring those five tries. A lot of those were catch and fall over line stuff. Um, He moves to the Sharks this year, and I I don't see him starting. Um, I think Sione Katoa and I think Ronaldo Mulatalo are locked for the wing there. 
I don't think he'll be in the centres either. They've got a few options there. Jesse Ramian, um, Connor Tracy, et cetera, et cetera. So I've probably got him at the very bottom of do the job because we have seen a lot of great things from him so far. But it's just hard to argue him going any higher for the fact we know he's unlikely to start in round one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, we actually do have some players in not that great that might start in round one. It's more so we've just seen a lot of great moments from Ikebala and we have seen consistency. So you're just putting him below Corey Oates? I think so, because I think Corey Oates starts this year where yeah. Matt Ikebala, I don't think we see him start, to be honest. Yeah, probably. Well, I, yeah, I already threw him down there. Uh, I was waiting to see kind of where you were going to put him, if you were going to put him above or below Jackson Paulo. But yeah, I think that, uh, I, I think that, yeah, we'll put him at the below end. And hopefully, uh, you know, with the Sharks, they've got a very attacking team. Uh, obviously, Nico Hines comes there. They've got Matty Moylan. Uh, mm-hmm. The fullback is, uh, who's their fullback right now? Uh, William Kennedy. Okay. Uh, and, and the only really there. position they have open is that centre spot. And they've listed Matt Kavala as a centre on their website. So I think that might be throwing a lot of people off. He didn't play one game a center last year yeah so for him to be the winger for the roosters i just didn't see any evidence to suggest that he'd go even better there in the centers so i don't see him in that 17 to start unfortunately and he's good enough to start on the wing it's just mulatalo and Katoa are probably a little bit better yep i agree all righty next up here we're going to get to the one that a lot of people complained about on last year's team maker mikhail rabalawa here of the dragons I had him in, obviously, Dosavuti. I'm in Fiji. My family's Fiji. I love Fiji. But last year, uh, before uh, that season, I was not impressed with him at all. I thought he dropped the ball a lot. I thought he wasn't that great. And we ended up putting him in not that great. Um, I would definitely be putting him into the job. I, you know, a lot of people are going to tell me that I already know that people are going to hate Corey Thompson being that high. I already know it. I just I know what we're going to see here. But I, I feel like Mikhail Ramalawa is probably top end to the job. Yeah, towards the top, I'm probably I'm probably looking now. Trying maybe sort of below the Marlo, what I had last year. Asako, maybe. Yeah, I'd have him probably within that. Oh, yeah, I'd have him there. I'd have him um, one above Mamalo, I think. Yeah, fair I think, enough. Yeah, I, I think um, he's got age on his side, Ravalawa. He's probably a little bit more explosive um, than Ken Mamalo. And Ravalawa, I think the biggest thing that lets him down is he does have the error in his game. If he can yeah. cut that out, he's one of the most explosive. And, and, you know, it's just a thing with these Fijian boys, right? Whenever they play in the outside backs, they are explosive and dangerous every time they touch the ball. Yeah. Uh, but in the case of Michaeli Ravalawa, it's just unfortunate that he does have that error or two in his game. And defensively, he does shoot off his wings sometimes. If he can cut those two out, he'll be quality next year. Um, it's just those two attributes that let him down at times, I think. Yeah, I think that yeah, he definitely has the ability to be quality. The Dragons have, you know, thrown together a bit of a rando team this year, which will be interesting to see how a they go. depth, but yeah, not too many standouts for each position. Absolutely. I'm not exactly picking them up as much as other people are, but each to their own. Uh, and I think the Rabalawa will be one of the standouts. If there's going to be a standout there, Ben Hunt obviously will be uh, quality, but... Uh, in regards to Ramalawa, I think he has the ability to. It's just interesting to see how the Dragons go that will facilitate a winger uh, being able to really uh, do well there at Cobra. So we'll put him in between uh, Simonson and Mamalo, yeah? Yeah. All righty. Next up here, we will move to Murray Talangi from the Cowboys. I think last year was his rookie year, wasn't it? Um, if not his... Mm, no, he played uh, 10 games prior to that. Uh, but he was very much in and out. Last year was his first full season of NRL. Okay, and, so know, he definitely... Like with the, we definitely can't be putting him into the unproven then. Uh, we yeah. definitely can't because he's played enough games. I I love what Murray Talangi brings. I think yeah. that, honestly, he could go to a better club and absolutely annihilate. Obviously, the Cowboys are a really tough team and he still is doing quite well. Mm-hmm. I would honestly throw him at the personal. I would put him at the bottom of the quality. One under quality, was it, or at the bottom of it? At the very bottom of it. Okay, and I'd probably have him behind Kyle Feld still. I've, just seen, I've, I've seen a little bit more from Kyle throughout his career. I've probably got Talangi and do the job. But with that being said, I should, I should say, if I had to pick a few Smokies to make their Maroons debut next year, he'd probably be one of them. Um, you know, yeah. we saw him scoring hat tricks and playing fantastic towards the end of last year. Um, early hit-ups, he was the full package there. Um, I think Kyle Feld's probably just still a little bit ahead of him from what we've seen and, and on the current form. I just, yeah, it's just for me in regards to the, the, the style of the game nowadays, I just think it suits a lot more of Murray Talangi than it does, obviously, Carl Felt. And like I said, Carl, Carl Felt, unbelievably experienced. He'll get the job done. He is the epitome of the do-the-job player and probably is overall the better player. But in the same sense, I just really desperately want to put him alongside Jason Saab because I think that Saab, the reason we put him in there is because he's got so much pace and 
although he's not exactly the most rounded player, he's just he's such an enjoyable player to watch. And I think with Murray Talungi, for me, he is such an enjoyable player to watch. He's very, very young. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think he's, I think in regards to this list, list he's very similar to Saab in a lot of aspects. Look, don't get me wrong. If you ask me this question in a few years, he will definitely be above Kyle Felt. But if we look at the statistics last year, um, Kyle Felt played more games. He played for the Maroons and he was better in every single statistic area. More tries, try assists, line breaks, tackle breaks and, meter, and average meters. And so if, if I'm going to... If we are going to do this, I think we need to bump Kyle Felt up to the bottom of quality. I was literally about to... I was, as you were talking right now, I was about to suggest you put Kyle Felt bottom of quality... I would probably, yeah, I'd probably still put, I put Talungi above Ravana though. Yeah, and then I'd put Talungi at the at the very top of do the job. Yeah. Um, I was so impressed with Talungi last year. There's no reason why he can't be quality, um, but I think we just can't let our bias shine through and how awesome he was to finish the year last year. And we've got to still keep in mind what we know. And what we know is currently, Kyle Felt was probably better throughout the whole season, all things considered. Absolutely. All right, we'll bump him up to quality at the bottom and then we'll put Talangi above Rapana there. And I think Kyle Felt probably does deserve to be going quality. I just think that he's a very do-the-job kind of player, uh, but yeah. a quality player at that. Uh, next up here, we do go back to the Raiders. We are going back to the Raiders here. And interesting uh, that obviously Nick Kotrich is labelled as the winger this year and not as a centre, which is what he originally was at the Raiders, I believe. Uh, and then went to the Dogs and was centre, was winger, didn't ever work out, and now he's back at the Raiders. Um, I'm, I, I don't know what to do with him, man. He used to be very good. He used to be, but obviously the Dogs really, uh, you know, they gave him a good slapping. Yeah, ha- I mean, how do you, how much do we include of his previous form at the Raiders and how much do we include of what happened at the Bulldogs last year? Um, now that he's back at the Raiders, I think he can more or less forget about the Bulldogs season. And I'd be wrong, I'd be... If we can forget the Bulldogs season, I'm putting him just below Kyle Felt there in quality because he was playing for Australia and for the Blues. If we, if we were forgetting last season, I'd put him above Kyle Felt below Jason Saab. Yeah, but the thing is, can we forget last season? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, oh, I think we're going to have to make a bold prediction here and that, that I think, he yeah. will go back to the Raiders and he will find his best form again. Yeah. And if he does find his best form, I've probably <laughs> even got him above Jason Saab, if I'm honest. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, but isn't he more? Wasn't he more of a centre the last time he was at the Raiders? In and out, he he played both positions there for yeah. them. So um, I think he probably, probably played more games on the wing overall, though. I would say if we're making the bold uh, prediction here, the people in the comment section uh, go down there. Obviously, let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, but I personally, yeah, I would personally put Cottage above Jason Saab. Yeah, I and agree. I mean, look there, at is even, there isn't even an argument uh, if he gets back to his form that he could be above Thompson too, but that's stretching it. Well, at his time at the Raiders, 16 tries, 12 tries, 4 tries. Not, what happened, not sure what happened that year. And 14 tries. Bulldogs last year, 14 games, 3 tries. Yeah. And that was all, so, that's, that's 3 tries through 14 games, though. He didn't even play anywhere. He played only half a season, but... Uh, I, yeah, I, I think that was more of a... I, I think we're pretty happy to forget that Bulls... Uh, Bull, not Bulls season, that Bulldog season. And yep. I think we'll rate him as high as above Jason Saab. And probably by the end of this year, we'll more than likely go above Corey Thompson and maybe to an extent Nofaluma. I don't see him going above Sivo, though, if Sivo gets a full season under his belt. Yeah, um, I'd agree with that completely. Yeah. All righty, next up here, we go to uh, Nick Meany. Now, he has the dogs here, but I believe he's gone to the Storm, hasn't he? He has, and so here's the interesting one, right? We're willing to forget about Nick Kotrick's one season at the Bulldogs. We've only seen Nick Meany besides five games for the Knights. We've only seen him for the last three years play for the Bulldogs, who, I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. They've been very, very poor. Yeah. Um, and so if we're willing to forget one season for Nick Kotrick, can we be willing to forget three seasons for Nick Meany and say, hey, he played for a really poor team. He are you arguing for unproven He always there. The potential's always been there, but we just haven't been able to see it for the team that he played for. Um, uh, I'm, I probably want to put him in do the job. I probably want to put him maybe below Anari Chuala there. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say... I don't say, want to too much of potential, right? Yeah, well, based on the fact that he's going to the Storm, he more than likely will go well and truly higher than this by next year because everyone oh, will yeah. see the highlight plays and whatnot. I think that above uh, Nguamba is probably best because he still does have... He did still have some shining lights at the dogs and whatnot. 
uh, even though the did, dogs yeah. were, were shocking. And that's why the Storm have obviously picked him up. And he'll, have a, he'll be very good there for the Storm. And obviously, they picked up Xavier Coates as well. So, uh, two, yeah. brand new, uh, two brand new wingers down there in Melbourne. Look, I'm, I'm happy to put him below Tuala just because. And Tuala's that guy. Like, we've done this with every single team maker. There's one guy who's the focal point in the middle of everything that you have to decide above or below. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Tuala's been that guy here. The gatekeeper. Think, yeah, exactly right. And I think that he is, he's just above uh, Meany, but Meany will be above him next year in my personal belief. Completely agree. And here's one thing that we need to sort of say. So the Storm don't sign you unless they see something. And as much as we don't want to pick on this tier maker for potential, you're not getting signed by Craig Bellamy unless he's seeing some serious potential. And so I think that's another big factor we've got to take into account. Absolutely. All right. Next one here is going to be a tough one because it is my boy, Philip Sammy from the Gold Coast Titans. And I am hearing big raps about him in regards to maturity for this season. I'm hearing big raps in regards to what he's doing uh, going into this year. But in the same sense, my guy, I do have to give you a ranking based on what we saw last year. And it wasn't pretty. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and especially, obviously, coming off that Queensland game, three, I think he played, or down two. Uh, he played, it might even be actually in game one of 2021. One and two. One, yeah, one and two. Did he play much of that one in the second game? Uh, he played the second game and got dropped for the third, unfortunately. But I think he, I don't think he played the full game in the second. I think they actually took him out and didn't really bring him back in, maybe. Uh, oh, they okay. might have shifted him around or something. I can't remember. Uh, I could be completely off there. But uh, look, I think that this year, Sammy's going to get back to his best. Uh, I really do. I really do believe it. But in the same sense, like, off last year, there's no way I'm putting him in not that great, not a chance. But I definitely would... Pro- I'd probably put him above... Tuala, maybe. I think I'm probably above Tuala based on what we've seen recently, but I couldn't be putting him above a lot of these other guys. Maybe even Asako. No, I think Asako is still... Oh, man. But as a player, I know Sammy is better than probably the majority of these guys into the job. Um, and as a player, he has the ability to be upper in quality, but he just had a really cool year last year. And mm-hmm. I'm going now off the fact that I know he's getting big raps in the club. Because I got off a phone call just before this where I was speaking about him and there's some big raps. But in the same sense, what are your thoughts? Yeah, he's definitely above Chihuahua for me for the fact he's played rep. He's played a few more seasons. He's shown a bit more. He's shown that he's one of the fastest men in the competition. I mean, he ran down Josh Adokar. Um, obviously, you know, conditions play a factor there, but you don't do that unless you're very, very fast. Um, he got re-signed for two more years recently. Yeah. You don't get re-signed in preseason unless you're showing something very impressive. The reason why I only want to put him in the middle of do the job is, and I do, I do love Phil, we, a good friend, we talk after all UFC events and stuff like that, but I'm not sure he gets the starting wing spot. I think Greg Marsu is another great option there. I think Corey Thompson's locked on for one wing, and I think the other one will be between Phil and Greggy Marzu. So I've got him um, probably in the middle there of do the job. I think he'll always do the job for you as a winger. Sometimes you get a little bit more with Phil. Sometimes you get a little bit less. I disagree that Greg gets it, but I can't say why, but I disagree why Greg gets it. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I do believe that Sammy will get that starting job uh, and we'll see that through the preseason, in my opinion, but I can't, I, I, I can't say why I believe that. Um, but yeah, I would be putting him personally. I'm probably going to put him above. Look, honestly, man, I'd really put him above Mamalo. Yeah, I'm happy for that. I'm putting him above Mamalo, but that's, look, I am, honestly, if we're banking it off last season, man, you could honestly be arguing for below of the, the do the job area. Not, not that great, but mm-hmm. the lower end of do the job. But I just think that I know a lot about what's coming through for Philip Sunny, and we know what he has on the past, and I know mm-hmm. he's going to do it again with what, I, what I've heard. So, um, just, just one further on Greg Marsley for a move on, if I can give an honourable mention here. Eight games last year, six tries. 27 tackle breaks, mm, seven no. line breaks, and averaged 185 running meters. I oh, know. I, I very, love very Greg, good dude. Stats. Yeah, I love Greg, man. I love Greg. But I, I, I believe that Sammy will get the job. I believe Sammy will get the job. Yeah. But if Greg gets it, I'm not going to complain. But I, I think that Sammy will get the job. But I, I'm pretty happy to put him above Mamalo and Ramalawa. And it's good to see that there's some depth there at the Titans now anyway. For sure. And even so, Greg Marsley with eight games, he'd, he'd only fit into the unproven category regardless. So, Absolutely. All righty. Well, let's move on now to uh, a man who's definitely proven. It's Ruben Garrick here from Manly. Had an unbelievable year last year. Like, a really unbelievable year. Uh, I truly, based on what I've seen recently, if he can keep doing what he's doing, I'd be wanting to put the quality section. But in the same sense, he is also a recipient of being at an incredible setup there for the wingers specifically. The wing position specifically at Manly 
is a peak position. And honestly, how much of that do you give to the guys individually? And how much do you give to the team set up uh, as a, a as an overall thing? I'm not too sure, but I love watching yeah. with Garrett. I'm not too sure which team to put him in though. Well, that, oh, I'm really stuck too. So I, I hate to do it, but I have to go strictly by... Now, we know he almost broke the record for the most points ever in an entire season. Only second there. Hazamel Mazra has a few more. Broke the uh, most ever points in a regular season. 27 games, 23 tries, 98 tackle breaks, 38 lion breaks, and averaged 156 running meters. So for me, just under Mike Acevo there in quality, or you could even argue above Mike Acevo. Now, we know that a lot of those stats are because he played outside of Tom Trevojevic. We know that if Tom wasn't there the whole year, he wouldn't have those same stats. But we can only go off what we've actually mm-hmm. seen and the facts, and that's what he did. And so regardless of who played fullback and who set him up, for me, I probably even want him above c if I'm honest, I think, just off last year. I'm going to say that we should put him below Sevo. I know, but above that David Norfoluma, above Norfoluma, I'm happy uh, with that. The reason being is because it wasn't really until last season that Garrick really, obviously, shun um, broke out as such. He really broke out. How old is Garrick now? Well, actually, I'd like to show you a comparison of what you're saying there and how much, like, facts you're speaking right now. Last year, four tries to twenty-three. Um, yeah. No try assists last year, three this year. Last year, four line breaks, 38 this year. Last year, averaged 103 metres. This year, 156. Now, that's not a small improvement, right? That is a monster yeah. improvement, which has to be a big case of the Tom Travojevic factor. No, this is really... Those stats are actually making me want to put more... Can we drop lower? him further, actually? Yeah. Because that's only one great season. The year before, to have 34 less line breaks, it's clear that you benefited a lot by having Tom Travojevic. Uh, I'm even tempted to probably drop him below Corey Thompson now after seeing those stats. Yeah, I think he's probably... I think I'd put him there too. Uh, it, it, I, I, just, I can tell the people are going to hate that Thompson's up. Maybe even below Nick Kotrick, really. We, we can't understate this, Blaze. He went from four tries... I put him below. Oh man, that's twenty three, really, <laughs> bro. That's really dropping him. I could honestly put him below Carfell. Oh, because we're basically with his, goal kicking, season, though, he, with his goal kicking though, he he broke the record for the points in a regular oh, season. He does give the goal kicking factor too. Yeah. Can we put him one above Saab and just below Kotrick? Because our argument is Kotrick's played for Australia in the Blues. Yeah, but do, like Saab has at least got the hype. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I guess we can put the experience of Garrick, but bro, those stats differences are wild. Oh. That stat differences is wild with no Trevojevic really in 2021. Yeah, injury. it's a shocking increase. And it, it, it's due to the Trevojevic factor. We can't sugarcoat that. You know, I'm thinking for quality, Sevo, Norfoluma. I'm thinking we bump Kotrick one up over Thompson because he has played for Australia in the I'd Blues. Agree, yeah. Um, and then I think we have... So then it would be Kotrick, Thompson, Garrick, Saab, and Felt. Yeah, I agree. That's a, it's a tough one. Though. These wingers are actually being a little bit more tough. I guess because there is such... Yeah, it, it's a tough position. Differences to in the run. games. Yeah. You know, Carl Felt, of everyone on the quality, is the best finisher. Um, of everyone there, you know, the most power is Sevo. The most overall is probably Corey Thompson. I was the say. best point scorer is Garrick. And then the fastest is uh, Saab. So yeah. they're all bringing such different attributes. And Absolutely. what you and I value, the next person might say, well, hey, I don't care about strength and power. I want a reliable finisher like Kyle Felt. So I've got the other way around. Yeah, and or then, I don't really care too much about that. I just want someone who's going to be able to we kick the ball down deep and, you know, Jason and he Saab. Can, yeah, and, and then Jason Saab. Jason Saab. Um, and so for that reason, there's really no right or wrong. And there's, there's a lot of room for opinion when it comes to wingers. Absolutely. All righty. Well, uh, yeah, well, Chuck, that's, that's a tough one there. We were going to rank him high and then we realized... I cannot believe that. That's that's, yeah, that's shocking. To me. That's a big drop. All righty. Hopefully you can back it up this year and Manly do have a good setup again for the wingers there. Uh, it just comes down to Dravovic. Obviously, he is a Dravovic factor. As much as maybe the Manly team is also got players around him, Dravovic is the guy, clearly, for those stats. Uh, would love to see the other stats of other players, too, regarding that. But I'll, next I'll, up I've here, got to make a post on that, Garrick. That's, I'm writing a note now. I've got to make a post on that. That is a <laughs> shocking <laughs> increase. Holy crap. Absolutely. All righty. Next up, he will go to Ronaldo Montalo. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he is a uh, very good player. I like watching Ronaldo Montalo, and I would be pretty happy to put him pretty high up in quality. I agree. I probably... Hmm, do we have... I, I think he's probably towards the bottom end. 
I probably... Oh, quality. I would have put him up actually towards the top end. Well, I don't think you can have him over Sevo. I don't think you can have him over Norfolk McCotrick. I think you could probably... I think you could probably put him over Corey Thompson. I personally think Corey Thompson... Look, based on uh, the pace of the game nowadays, it probably suits more of Ronaldo Mortado a lot more. Obviously, he would have played for Mm. Queensland. He actually would have played for Queensland last year if it was not for the fact that he wasn't eligible uh, because of an absolute... And he's pretty shame. much already been locked in to play for the Kiwis in the World Cup. Uh, Michael Maguire is really keen on him, so he, he's going to play rap footy next year. We know Mate, that. I want to put him above Cottridge. Wow, yeah. I mean, we know he should have played rep. He would be a rep player. His stats were better than Cottridge's last year. Um, he's an attacking... Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, you know, the argument is Cottridge is a rep player, but the, the argument, the counter-argument rather is... Mortalo would be. It's not his yeah, job. Mortalo really should be based off what we saw last year. Uh, and yeah, he's uh, at the Sharks. He's going to really lap up the high frenetic pace that they yep. bring as well. Uh, like I said, Matty Moylan and Nico Hines, they're, they're too fast-paced style. That's why I, maybe not necessarily as high on the Sharks as others because they're fast-paced. You've got um, Jaden Braley there. It's, no, Blake Braley, sorry. Blake Braley. No, is he the night? Which one's at the Sharks? Well, Blake Braley will probably play nine, but they'll also have someone like Cameron McInnes who will be creating a lot of more options at their. But Blake is the one at the Sharks, yeah? Yeah, and Jaden for the Knights. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously... There's there's a younger brother too coming through. Taj Braley there for the Sharks too. He's a hooker. Well, there you go. And at at the Sharks as well. Wow. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, obviously, uh, Will and Kennedy down in the fullback, and he's a bit different though. He's a bit of a bigger style. But yeah, very fast-paced team, and hopefully Nico can work out and obviously get some ball out to Molotalo. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to put him above Cottridge. I personally... Probably, uh, I think he's actually maybe even higher, but I'm happy to leave him there because you obviously have a bit lower and I have a bit higher, so that's pretty much in the middle. Hey, if you want to argue one over an awful emra, I'll listen. I, I, won't, uh, I, won't. I just think that the game, he probably, it, the, the game nowadays, you watch, if he had to play the Queensland man, I think he would have suited that system brilliantly. And yeah. I think the Sharks, obviously, last year, they had a uh, tumultuous season in regards to changes of coaching. What, what, what do you value more? Norfolk's entire career and his longevity and consistency? Or the fact that we really do think Ronaldo Molotalo is going to be a proper gun. I think Molotalo's ceiling is higher than what Norfoluma has shown. I think his ceiling. I, is I, I agree. So I am willing to put him above Norfoluma if you agree. Yeah, I'll put him. I'll put him above Norfoluma. But I still think that Sivo has shown enough that he is one of the. He yeah. can be one of the elite. Uh, and oh, yeah. Molotalo will maybe be in the elite by next year or a couple of years after. But yeah. Uh, I love what Tyler brings, and hopefully he has a good World Cup so probably will play with the Kiwis, as you said. Uh, but next up, he will move to Selwyn Cobo of the Brisbane Broncos. Now, as you guys can see, it's got Wynn and Manly Seagulls here. Uh, there's no guarantee that he gets a spot anywhere right now. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we actually had him in the uh, fullbacks tier list with uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Luke as well, uh, okay. because there's obviously a potential that he can be fullback over to Essie New, or we also have him here in the wing, and it is even talk that he still could also play centre. He is an absolutely unbelievable talent coming through. Obviously, you have to put him in unproven. I would personally put him above Suwali in the unproven section. Big call. I would as well. Um, i just got to get up his stats for the grand final here because he did play fullback for Wynnum Manly Seagulls. He may play more wing next year. It's always a good place for sort of players to... Um, transition, and I'm just trying to get up the match stats now. Obviously, Queensland don't keep um, as much of you know more, as careful stats as you see in the NRL. But he scored, and please tell me they recorded the tackle breaks. He had 91 post contact meters, Jeez. two line breaks. He ran 274 meters from 20 runs. And hold on, he broke 18 tackles, more than the rest of his team combined. In a grand final. Wow. But wait, as in 18 more tackles than the rest of his team combined? Or is no, he no, like... he made 18 individually. But yeah. look at the rest of his team. Jesse Arthurs, Richie Kenner, and David Mead, they got two, one, and one. Yeah. And they're all NRL players. Yeah. And the rest, so he had more tackle breaks on his own than the other 16 men on his team. Yeah. I dare say he had more than the other team combined as well. I'm going to drag it across. Let's find that stat out. 
Honestly, man, he is such. He's got such some legs on him, dude. I'm so excited. And it's good that I'm giving him such a big rap. He's getting such a big rap in both fullback and winger uh, positions, so that people really yeah. understand who's coming through here. You wait until the media and Brisbane get a hold of this guy. Like, yet they haven't really gotten a hold of him just yet. I don't mm. think he's really hit the mainstream just yet. Obviously, yep. I've seen you know a couple of other podcasts here and there talking about him. And it's like, yeah, that's that, that's great, but the media hasn't got onto him yet. So you wait when he when he gets caught up. They're going to make him bigger than Suwali, in my personal opinion. If you don't know, you're going to know very soon. <laughs> I don't care if this kid plays prop. He has that much freakish ability and X factor. Watching him in the grand final last year, I went into that grand final place thinking, I'm watching this because I, I, I want to watch him. I want yeah. to see what he's made of. I want to see him in a big moment, in a big stage. We saw Greg Inglis in finals games for the Norse Devils in Queensland Cup, and he had fantastic performances just like this, and then went on to kick on, obviously, very, very well in the NRL yeah. Selwyn Cobo's got a long way to go, but if early indications are anything, this kid is going to be a superstar. Out of interest, would you agree that by the time if he does play wing this year, he he'll be in quality by the end of this year, I believe. When we do the, if we do, yeah, the there's no way you could put him in elite base off one year, but yes, he would be in quality after one year. Yeah, just just like like someone like Ruben Garrick, a steep increase, a great rookie season, whatever it is. Um, even Different though the numbers so with Garrick, Garrick is relying on a freakish season from an individual player, in my personal opinion. Someone Cobb would yep. be relying on his own. Post- but in the sense that it's been one season for Garrick, it'll be one season for Cobbo also. Yeah. So there could be the pushback, but uh, like you know, we're happy having Garrick up in quality. He and would I think need we'll twenty games. Cobbo. <laughs> he would need twenty games under his belt, though. That's the thing. Yes. Well, I think he has seven or so. In- Five or seven now, so... No, nah, no, he hasn't played in our event, has he? He's played a couple. Um, NRL? Yeah, I'll just double check how many. Seven. Seven overall. Was that for the Broncos? Yeah, he played reserve, wing, 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 centre, centre, centre. Oh, true. Okay. And then went back. He averaged 103 metres across those games. One try assist, one line break. He did have 25 oh, tackle breaks. there was breaks. a couple of games, I remember. I, I so that's yeah. more than three tackle breaks um, a game. So the potential was there already. Yeah, That was probably just them putting the feelers in so we can kind of get a read for how it goes. And then obviously went back to and pick up. And also, there. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. So yeah, he'll go to the top of my room for me. Jeez, uh, look at the two up top there. Suwali and Kapo. We've got some big talent coming through. And obviously, guys, a lot of people say the Queensland Cup is such a... Queensland and New South Wales Cup is such a... a step down it's like it's not really like it's a step down but it's not as much of a difference as you make it out to be a lot of people out there a lot of waiting jobs out there say like it's a you know under 18 has gone up against for the nrl going up against under 12s comparison mm. it's like it's just not true at all um the, Maybe the speed of the game and that's more so affected in a middle role rather than out on a wing yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's 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 frustrating people don't really understand and they feel like they need to have a chat. But in the same sense, like good on you. But you just need to know that Selwyn Cabo is going to translate very easily. Uh, yeah. He's unbelievable. But next up here, we've got three more players to go here. We've been going for an hour and a half, man. We're slapping this down. I love it. Mm. Uh, people can't complain that we didn't give you an in-depth analysis. Uh, yeah. Next up here, we do have Sione Kotoa. No guarantee that he gets the spot there at the Sharks. I actually think that uh, he will get the spot, though, because obviously, you know, Ikevalu does come over with Fitzgibbon, though. He might, he might think about it. Yeah, that, that's the thing. He does have a connection with the coach. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an Coming issue, maybe. Time. But Sierra Katoa is unbelievable. Like, honestly, what right, we saw in maybe, was it 21 or, 20, or 2020? Which one was the season where he had a really good year? Had 16 tries last year. I think that's the one you're referring to. 16 from nine. And played 19 games, had 16 tries. Um, and averaged 145 running metres that year. Is that 2020 yeah. you're talking about? That's 2020, yeah. Last year he wasn't as good, but he only played the 13 games. So I'm getting confused because you keep saying last year, and obviously last year. I know, was, yeah. I, but I know what you're saying. Like, <laughs> I'm mixing. I, I still think we're in 2021. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, look, it's it's tough because I want to put him in quality. I think he's a great player, man. I think he's definitely better than, than do the job. Uh, and if I'm personally going to put him up there, I would put him. I'm not going to lie, man. I'd probably put him alongside Montala. Well, no, I think that's too much. I think um, I, I don't think he's quite on Mulatalo's level. I think he offers a little bit more an attack in terms of finishing. His finishing ability is right up his there with the best. Maybe not up there, but his attack um, is definitely up there. I'm, I'm probably, yeah, I'm, no, I, I think maybe more in there amongst the Garrick and Saab bunch. I think more so. I, I don't think you can quite have him so high. I mean. The interest, he did drop off a little bit this year in terms of his average stats, average less mm. meters, average less tries. Uh, but then his line breaks were right up there. He had less missed tackles. So he improved in some areas, regressed in others, which makes it difficult for me. 
I just think that last year, man, this is based off of what we said before as well, is that like last year was such a tumultuous season for the Sharks there. So it was very difficult for anyone to really get anything going there. Obviously, they had Shawnee J there, but SJ went down injured for a lot of it. So that obviously affects the wingers quite dramatically. Um, obviously, they don't know who their six was at all. Obviously, John Morris got fired. They had an interim okay, coach yep. um, that Craig Fitzgibbon got announced, but he's not coming until this year. Uh, you know, the, the backs, which is, I think the backs specifically were all over the shop and the forwards were also quite agey. Uh, yep. So I think the last year was a really tough year. Didn't and I- have that go forward. Let me add this to your argument. In the last three games last year, he scored five tries and he had eight tackle breaks mm. and he had, uh, no, sorry, eight line breaks and nine tackle breaks. Very, very great attacking stats over a three game period. With, with, with all, all things considered, I, I've probably got to put him below Garrick, but above Saab. I'd put him above Garrick, but I'd be, I'd be happy to go as far down as Garrick. See, I think Garrick's more of a complete Garrick... wing in the fact that you get the goal kicking as well. Yeah, but like Garrick is just too much of a dramatic increase, man. Like, there's just too much of an individual... Yeah. Like, that's not based on... That's the thing. If it was based on an individual increase of his own reasoning, there's no way that anyone can say that that increase isn't because of the freakish season that Tom Javoyevich had because we've obviously seen Saab love up from it and then we've also seen that dramatic increase from the season that Javoyevich was completely injured basically and then obviously comes back and, and at the beginning of the year I wonder what Garrick's stats were in the first mm. eight games when Manly struggled I'll, I'll agree with you I'll put him above Garrick and the argument I'll throw forward for the listeners is last year he had 12 more tries than Ruben Garrick and he had uh, 14 more line breaks and last year, so, they were watching is 2020. 2020. Yep, yeah, sorry, in 2020. Um, I think Saab was better in 2021. But like you said, there was, the, there was big factors that played a part into that. Um, so if we compare both of their last seasons, Katoa has been the better player. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a tough one. Obviously, that's not the comment section, guys. Yeah. What your thoughts are? Uh, I don't think anyone could argue for did the job. I, de- I don't think that could even be an argument. But I definitely think that anywhere in quality, uh, realistically anywhere in quality. Oh yeah, not above Sibo or Montalo, but anywhere from where we mentioned is pretty much debatable mm. in, in all those aspects. Uh, but I, I do believe he's a great player, very really strong ball runner uh, as a winger as well. So uh, yep. we'll be interesting to see how they go with the fast pace style of the Sharkies this year. Two more to go here. Stafford Doa. We spoke about him briefly before. He's gone now, apparently, from the Knights to the Tigers. Yep. Uh, is he going to get the starting spot then, do you reckon? I don't think he'll get the starting spot, and he's only played 20 games in his career. So I think we look to put him unproven this year. Absolutely. And I think he's probably under Suwali, uh, but above Hayes Dunster, because we have seen a little bit more from him. Yeah, agreed. I definitely put him unproven uh, because obviously, yeah, Ken Mamalo and Nofaluma will be getting the two spots there. Uh, yeah, hopefully Toa can prove himself and uh, do well with the Tigers. Very difficult team to prove yourself as a winger, as a back there mm-hmm. at that team. Uh, but yeah, I, I would put him up down soon and below Suwali. And I don't think there's a great deal else to be said there. Do you have anything else to say about him? No, I'm impressed. I've loved a lot of the attack that I've seen from him so far. Uh, but just until we see a little bit more, I think we played safe and go unproven. Yeah, there you go. All righty, last one here is Mr. Xavier Coates. Obviously, he was mm. the Brisbane Broncos, the Papua New Guinea flyer. He will have, I believe, Justin Olam inside of him as well. Two Papua New Guineans there. Uh, still got, obviously, Munster and Jerome Hughes uh, feeding them the ball with the in the air. They've got number nine is uh, Harry Grant. Obviously, still unbelievable talent there. Obviously, a lot of people are saying this is also the last dance. There's more warrant and more... Uh, actual belief behind the last dance for the Storm than anything else. Uh, depends on Craig Bellamy, in my opinion, though. But overall, I really like the potential that Xavier Coates oh, yeah. does have at the Storm. And I and that's what's trying. I'm trying to wrap my head around how I rank him because I think he, at the Storm, could actually genuinely move into elite the longer he stays there if they stay oh, yeah. this way that, the, the way they do. Here's a bold prediction. He'll be in the elite next year. Yeah. Um, you know, here's a great question for the viewers. Who will have a better season next year? Josh Adokar or Xavier Coates? Coates really taking nice. Fox's w- wing position there at the Storm and Fox taking the big money to go to a lesser team there in the Bulldogs. I'm predicting Coates. And if I'm predicting Coates, there's no reason he can't move to elite. I think Xavier Coates, man, is... <laughs> the thing is here is that I, I, I think Xavier Coates is better in the air than Adokar. Um, and I think that he's yep. got... Relatively Better just as much that. pace. Like, I think he's got just as much pace. I think he's a very fast yeah. player, man. We've seen him really, yeah. you know, run, run, run down. I think they've had a chase between Adokar and Coates. Yeah. I think Adokar did 
I know everyone says that Coates caught him, but he didn't really. Um, I, I think I can't remember what it was now, but there was there was. A he, reason. he ran down Dane Gagai really impressively for tackle of the year this year, also. Yeah, but I think it was two years ago. I think it was 2020, and uh, Ado Car got away, and then Coates. You could see that Ado Car. I think he went. So something, anyway, long story short, he caught him, but he didn't really. Uh, and a lot of people misread that. Honestly, man, I don't know if you can put him in the league now, but I do think he'll be there next year. He will be. He will be definitely. Here's the thing. So when I did my, uh, my rankings last year, I did top 20 at the start of a season, the middle and the end. For the middle of the season, I had him in seventh. And a lot of people pushed back and said, no, that's not right. Um, you're picking too much off potential. Um, and, and looking back now, I think those people were probably right. I was probably incorrect in that. But it's just hard not to get on the potential of this guy. And, you know, but then again, we don't want to do a tier maker based on potential. So with that in mind, the fact he is currently... Um, a representative player for the Maroons. He does average over 100 metres. He is a try scorer. He did win tackle of the year. I am probably want to put him in quality below Kyle Felt. Oh, man, that's a bit cool. Um, but you're right. But you're not. But you're right. But you're not. Uh... <laughs> because I think if you go to do the job, he, he currently he is better than Murray Talungi. And we've got him at the top of do the job. Oh, there's no way I'll be putting Xavier Coates into the job. I, I we've know, got to go to quality. I know it's just how high be, up though, right? I just know there's going to be Muppets who don't get how good Xavier Coates actually is because he was with the Broncos. You know what I'm saying? Like the Broncos were yep. bad. And he was not great, but still was making Queensland. Wasn't he the winger for them in 2020? He was, yeah. He came in 2020. I hope I'm not wrong in that. Um, he came in in 2020, I believe. And I believe he played all three games last year. Wasn't meant to play all three games. Um, however, he uh, got recalled last no- uh, at the last minute because, obviously, of the, the situation, situation with Ronaldo yeah. Molitale, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah man. I, I would be happy to... Yeah, look... I guess based on what we know already, we we have to put him down the, the bottom end of, of quality. But like, the, there's no way that people don't understand what we're saying here and giving him the most unbelievable rap. Um, that honestly, I believe at the Melbourne Storm, if they play like they do, I could genuinely see him being talked about alongside Brighton. Yeah, and I'm go- I'm going to his origin stats from last year. He had five, five, and two for his tackle breaks. No tries across. He missed one tackle, missed three, then he missed zero in game three. Obviously, a big improvement there. And his average run meters were 91, 93, and 82. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to rep football, that's, that's, not, that's not his best footy. That's not his best footy. But then how much can we really... How much leeway can we give him for Clubland because he was playing with the Broncos who didn't have established halves? Um, and I've got no doubt if he was still there this year with someone like Adam Reynolds, we're going to see his stats go up. But yeah. then you move him to the storm and I think his stats are going to go to a whole other level. I think I'd have him as low as below Kyle Felt and I'd have him as high as below Corey Thompson. Uh, I've got him somewhere within that range and, and I'll let you pick if, if you agree that he's somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, because I keep looking at Garrick I'm just like, those stats are ridiculous. <laughs> I just yeah. keep looking at Garrick I'm just like, I want to put codes above Garrick, but I know that there are going to be people out there. And like I said, don't care people think, but in the same sense, you know, I just don't want to see a hundred comments saying like you guys are morons for chucking um, Garrick so low. It's like we've explained it to you. You should understand yep. right now uh, why we put it there. I would probably, I want to put Coates above above Garrick. Uh, I don't want to put him above Siona Katoa though. Yep, I'm happy with that. Uh, do you want to put him lower? If you want to put him lower, I really don't mind anywhere from below Siona Katoa to Carl Felt. I'm happy with. I reckon we put him in between Garrick and Sione Katoa. <laughs> or we put him one above Katoa. Uh, well, if you wanted to put one above Katoa, and then one in, then why, why wouldn't we just put him between Katoa and Garrick? Or, well, what you just said is that we either put him above Katoa or we put yep. him between Garrick and Saab. But why wouldn't we just put him between Katoa and, and Garrick? I, I think all things considered, I'd like, I, don't, I, I think I have Corey Thompson above him. Then I've got Coates, then I've got Katoa, then Garrick. Is yours looking the same as that? Or Well, what I was saying is that, because did you just say, because we've got right now, we've got Corey Thompson and yep. then Katoa. Uh, for, for now, we've got, we'll actually, remove Coates. We've got Corey Thompson, Katoa, Ruben Garrick, Saab, and Fell. Based yep. on what yep. we've done so far. So, what do you know what I'm saying in regards to, if you're saying that you want to put him above Katoa, but yep. you're also saying you don't mind if he's between Garrick and Saab, Yep. Does that make it sense to put him below Katoa, above Garrett? 
So in between Garrick and, and Catella. Well, that's yeah, right in the middle of what you're saying. Yeah, I'm happy for that. Yeah, because I think I think I think Xavier Coates is one of those guys, man, where you could rank him anywhere between there. It's not right or wrong um, for the fact that some of the games we've seen have been incredible, and some have had some defensive misreads. He he's not a Brett Morris where your best game and your worst game are this far apart. Because Coates is young, because he's so exciting and electric, his best game and worst game are this far apart, right? And so that's what makes it so hard. So um, if you're happy to make that call, I agree with it, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the comment section. I actually, out of all the tier lists we've done so far, I think I'm most excited to see the comment section about the wingers. And obviously, yeah. you know, we've gone really in-depth into them. So if you listen to what we're saying, you, you know kind of that we're giving reasoning behind it. It's not just kind of us going willy-nilly and saying, oh, yeah, cool, we love the pace of stars which are in the top. But uh, where do you think, who do you think would be probably the most controversial here uh, out of all this list so far? To name three players you think might be the most controversial. Okay, top three controversial. Um, the Manly boys, I, I think Saab and Garrick, a lot of people are going to want to see them in elite. Yeah. Um, I think we gave pretty good reason as to why that's not the case. And if I'm looking through the list, hmm. Maybe Ronaldo Mulatalo. I think people yeah. might not actually realize that some of the stuff he does is pretty special and some of the hard carries he has for his team are awesome as well. I think people might even be more inclined to have him down to do the job. Whereas, yet again, my apologies, I think we made a pretty good argument as to why he should be so high in quality. Absolutely. Yeah, I would say that if anyone's going to be controversial, it might be Xavier Coates as well. Um, because obviously yep. he was not so great necessarily at the later stage of his Broncos career. Um, but... Yeah, you feel like he's got so much potential. Um, maybe, yeah, we'd be looking at Ronaldo Montalo, absolutely. And then, yeah, probably Jason Saab. I reckon a lot of people are going to probably put him top five because they don't really know what they're talking about. Um, but in the same sense, that <laughs> I'm just insulted them having a different opinion. It is what it is. If you have a different opinion and you want Saab up there, that's a cool story, man. Like, you know, if you want... If I'm taking a draft, I probably do select him higher than a few of the guys here. Like I, if I'm taking a draft and like a narrative style, I'm putting him up there. But that's not really what this is about. This is more of ranking them in general, what we're seeing, what kind of potential we could see, but also what we've also seen so far. So I think we've done pretty good here, man. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm really happy. I'm just rolling through now. I don't think I have any last minute changes. Exactly right. Yep, well, there you go. But anyway, guys, that's going to do us here for today. Uh, we obviously are going to be doing every single position. So check back every Monday and Friday. That's when we are putting this series out. Obviously, thank you to Clarkie again for coming on. We've been here for a crack of time, man. And uh, where can everyone find you again? Yeah, guys, if you want, jump over to my Instagram, send me a DM there. We'll talk footy. And um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it. You search Clarkie on social media, it should come up. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys there. Absolutely, man. And obviously, guys, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, chuck your notification bell on for when it does come out. Uh, I'm so keen with the NRL season, man. I've been doing all of these, and I'm just so pumped getting to talk footy again and, and knowing that people will hold us accountable for our opinions pre-season. And that's the fun part. You know, I get people all the way to the middle part of the season, even now, talking about last year's predictions of these individual players. So it's just such a good, such a good series for me that gets people right back into the free spirit. But we're going to jump off for now, guys. I appreciate you as usual. Get in the comments section right now. Tell us what you would have done. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.